I still love the game. He's, he's one of my favorites, but he's not my favorite no more because it's hard being a game fan because he's such a, a dope, dope rapper. But he does so many stunts, so so, so much, <laughs> so much like just questionable stuff for mm. clout. It's hard to I've been and I, it's hard defending game. It's hard. It's real hard. And I just got tired of the defense. Like tired of when, when he when he did <laughs> Stray and Eminem uh, last oh, year, yeah. that was like enough for me. Like, all right, you're going too far. Honestly, I got those from Amazon. Okay. Yeah, and I forgot how much they were on Amazon, but I kind of like you, I was in a mind state of going, like, how do I really wanna want to to move forward, right? And so I was looking for these grind, hustle, execute, execution, failure type of things. But when I was when I was younger, I was listening to this uh, like in my early twenties, I was listening to this um this like financial seminar mm -hmm. on CD, the CD. And the author kept talking about being versus doing. Mm -hmm. now, now I never understood it until like a couple of years ago. I thought I understood it then, but I di didn't really understand it. Mm -hmm. It's not about the doing. We so get so caught up on the doing. It's about the being. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to like, really like take my insides, like, you know, and really like recreate them to mm -hmm. actually be this, to mm -hmm. be the person who grinds. Be the person that hustles and executes, not the person that does the actions that mm -hmm. exude execution. Because you can do the actions, but if it's not who you are, it's not gonna last. It's not yeah, gonna yeah. keep doing it. Yep. We gotta really focus on who we are. So when I see that man hanging up on the wall, oh man, it just yeah, it, it just, it just do something to me because I know I'm in that I'm in that fight right now. I'm in that mm -hmm. fight of of reprogramming myself, you mm -hmm. know, from the inside out mm -hmm. on who I want to be, mm -hmm. you know, the being. Yeah. Um. So what a lot of people don't know is that I am a Franklin Covey facilitator, right? Okay. So I'm certified to teach a lot of Franklin Covey type okay. leadership courses, right? So one of the things I'm certified in is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. And so I used to travel all across the country and, and teach that to, oh, nice. to, I mean, thousands of people. But that's what it talks about. It talks about the whole inside out, right? Yeah. You know, doing the work internally yeah. and then executing on that work that you've developed internally, right? So that's like if you say you were an honest person or if you were a person of integrity or a person of character, you got to develop those things. Like you can't just tell a person. Like So one of the exercises we would do in class is, what if I told you I can do 50 push-ups? Would you believe me? And it was like, well, you can tell me you can do 50 push-ups. But can you though? I yeah. gotta see it. Yeah. And so then you have to demonstrate based upon my ability to do that internal work, to actually do exercise so I can do 50 push-ups. And so once I was able to do that, then you knew that I was able to do 50 push-ups or whatever the action truly was. Um, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it's just facade, right? I mean, a lot of people say, Yeah, I'm a I'm a boss, or I grind, I hustle. I mean, but, but do you really though? But that's the thing, though. Even with the push-ups, so I guess the push-ups is like you—that's a physical thing. So it's, it's a physical little bit thing, different. Right, yeah, but yeah. even with like the honesty or integrity or the hustle, you can do the actions but not really be it. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because you 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 can make yourself do stuff like the whole diet and exercise thing. Right, you know? right. You know, that's something I've always been my whole yeah, adult life. Me too. You hit you hit thirty, mm -hmm. and it's like the metabolism, but yeah, but it's but. You can put yourself on a diet. You can like do the actions for two months, mm. three months, and get results. But if it's not really, if you're not somebody to really love your temple, your body, if you if it's not really in you, you're gonna revert back to the eating yeah, bad because sure. you, it's not who you are. You are somebody who's just a glutton or whatever you want to call. I don't know. It's, just, it's, 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 it's an example, but it, you got to change who you are. So we can do the actions for so long, but right. if it's not who you are, you're gonna revert back to who you really are. Right, right. I that's, mean, well, well, that's the essential, the the essence of development habits, though, right? is you, you're making those things a part of your innate abilities. I mean, you're, you're literally making those things a part of who you become, but you have to be so consistent at it over and over and over and over and over again. Because if not, you, I mean, you're going to trail off, you're going to fall that's, off. That's what I'm, I'm actually learning that right now. I'm learning that now in terms of like habits. Because I'm, I'm figuring out how do you really 
change who you are? Because I think the older mm-hmm. you are, it's more difficult, the more sudden you. So how is it? Is it doing habits? Is it creating new habits? Is that, is that how you change? Because whatever it is. Well, I can tell you, according to, to, to Franklin <laughs> Covey, what, uh-huh. what how they say habits are formed. Habits are formed based upon your paradigm. So what you see impacts what you mm-hmm. do, which impacts the. So they have this whole thing called the see do get model, right? Matter of fact, like it's so crazy. I did a whole master class on this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's on the website right now, but it's kind of you know plugs so people can go watch that. But well, check it um, out. So. But yeah, it's 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 the see do get model, right? It's it's what we see our paradigm, right? And our paradigm is how we see the world around us, right? So if I if I see myself as you know a fit person a person who wants to take care of his temple, a person who wants to eat right, right? And I see that, or I, my paradigm is if I don't eat right, then, or if I don't take care of my body, then I'm going to get sick. I may get cancer. I may get, you know, whatever it may be. Then based upon my paradigm, I got to do certain things about about it to change it, right? And so then I go through that process of doing those activities, which in turn, and it's, it's cyclical. So what I see impacts what I do, impacts the results that I get. And because I get those results, it impacts my paradigm. Oh, okay. I can see me losing the weight. Oh, I can see these habits for me, right? And so they say it takes 21 days, consistent days to develop a habit, right? Or even to break a habit. It takes. They say it takes 21 consistent days to be able to do that. Uh, now, some people may take less. Uh, some people may take <laughs> a, lo- a long. But does that really change who you are though that's my that's, that's where i'm trying to get to because i feel like you can you can do a habit you can do an action for well you can't a, really change who you are though can you or is it it's like a spirit i don't know I, yeah I, 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 I don't know I, if you can change I, i'm on that journey because i feel like no matter what you're going to revert no matter what kind of habits you develop or right. no matter what kind of actions you do over time if it's not really in you if it's not really who you are you're going to revert back to who that person is well when you say change who you are what do you mean okay let's let's move away from uh the, the weight loss let's talk about yeah. honesty and integrity right yeah if you're just like a bad person or if you just like, maybe you're a good person, but you just lie or whatever, mm-hmm. where you can be honest for a while. But if you're, if you, if you're, if you're somebody who really just, you can't sleep at night, if you, if you're dishonest, mm-hmm. if you, you know, that's who you are. So you can't lie. Like, mm-hmm. you know, or if you do, like, I, I know somebody, for example, I know a person who just can't lie, mm-hmm. you know, like you can just look mm-hmm. at them and they're going to tell the truth. Or if they do, they're they going to call you back in an hour and say, you know, that just wasn't, All right. it's just like, you know, it's just, it, I don't know, it's just weird. You know what I'm saying? It's just, and not weird, it's, it's good, but most people can lie to you. <laughs> just, <laughs> they just lie straight to your face. Even, even little white lies, you know. Right. But if it's, I don't know, it's just something I'm really, because I'm, my thing is this grind and hustle. I'm trying to make mm. that who I really am. I'm trying to really mm. be about that life because I really feel like you can impact change. And not just for you, but the people around you and the yeah, people who, sure. you, who you influence. And I'm trying to make that who I am, not just what I talk about. Yeah. Know? I so mean, the, well... Well, habits in turn become behaviors, right? So if we think about what we do or who we are, it's, it's behavioral, right? And so once you change your mind, and they go through this whole process about your paradigm, once you change your mind, then you change your actions, you change your, and your, your habits eventually change your behaviors. And your behaviors are the things that kind of, I, I would say, define who you are as an individual, if you're honest or if you're, you know, you have integrity with the case is, but once your behaviors change, then that truly okay. is something that can say, hey, I'm on the right path to becoming right. that type of person. I but, it, but yeah, it's, it's definitely behavioral, though. Well, but going back to the whole signs on the wall, my big thing now is I'm trying to keep that in front of me. I'm trying mm-hmm. to keep what I see, who I associate with, you know, the stuff I listen to, you know, the podcast, mm-hmm. the information. I'm trying to make everything around what I want to be. Yeah, so your for, environment. For so sure. for having that, having it in my face, you know, because I'm, I'm a, you know, on a spiritual note, I believe what you put inside you, you know, what you see, what mm-hmm. you hear, you know, affects your spirit oh, you yeah. know, and your soul. So, you know, just seeing grind, like I want to get that stuff and put it around mm-hmm. me. You know what I mean? Even if I have to write it on a sheet of paper and write it on, on the wall. Well, you, you know? I mean, it's Amazon. Yeah, they, they not they are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> they straight Amazon be that's here in two man. days. But I'm all about the hustle on the grind. I didn't want to oh, get yeah. off, I didn't want to start off too much. No, no, no. That's, that's but dope. every time I sit, this is my second time being here. So just sitting down and looking at the stuff on the wall, right. and it just really like lights a fire in me because right, I'm about, yeah. I, I would like to think I'm about that life, that mm-hmm. hustle life, that grind life, that execution, not just talking about it, but being about it, not just wishing and hoping, but actually, you know, putting feet to pavement mm-hmm. because, and this is for anybody out there watching, we're talking about independent. Musicians and independent, mm-hmm. you know, recording artists, executives. 
whatever you're doing in this industry, you're meant to Im- impact somebody. Yeah. You know, you know, the creator, God, you know, wh- whatever you believe in gave you gifts and talents, skills for the greater good of the world. Mm-hmm. So you got to get to it, man. You got to yeah, get to I feel it. You on Not that, just bro. talking about it, but you got to because people are depending on you. You never know. It could be somebody's life on the line or it could be somebody's quality of life on the line. But you got to get to it, though. It's not just about talking. It's about executing because we need what you got. As, you know, we the, need it. The crazy thing is you meet a lot of people who just talk about it. They don't really execute. Right. It's really hard for people to truly execute on certain things. And the 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 biggest thing is sometimes we are we are our own inhibitors of procrastination. Right. We are our our own inhibitors of execution. Like, I mean, people are like, well, how do I truly execute on an idea? And a lot of times it's just, just go out and figure it out. Right. You may have to, I had a pastor one time. Uh, she was like, cause a lot of times people are, are fearful to do, to do things. Man, if I really get out there and how's it going to, and she was like, do it afraid. Mm-hmm. I was like, Ooh, yeah. Do it afraid. Mm-hmm. Like, even if you're fearful of what that may be that you're going to do, still do it. And then learn through that process. You know what I'm saying? Like, shoot, I remember trying to put this whole podcast together a couple of years ago when I did the very first interview. I didn't really know what I was doing. I bought some cameras, some lights. I didn't really know what we were doing. But we did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you go back and look at the very first episode of the interview podcast, whatever, that mug look, that mug look crazy. <laughs> but I did it. I had to start somewhere. And then you get better over over time, a lot of people think, well, I got to be good right now. I got to reach a certain level right now. And it's like, why wait? Like I was, I was talking to a guy um, either early this year or late last year. And he was like, man, I want to start my own podcast. But or and he wants to do I think it's around like, um, which is so it's, the, it's super dope, though, doing I want to put this whole idea out there, but uh, doing um, like it's not mental health, but um, bodily health, physical health, okay. eating right, you know, for, for black men. And I was like, cause that's what he does profession. I was like, yo, that'd be dope. He was like, yeah, but I don't have cameras. I don't have lights and all that. I got to get a great camera. And I was like, you got an iPhone? He was like, yeah. And you got a, can you get a little iPhone tripod? He was like, yeah. I was like, there you go. Right. He was like, are you for real? I was like, yeah, you don't need all this fancy equipment, fancy gear, to do none of that. Now I like having that, but you don't have to have that in order to get started. It's just the action of doing it. That's the man. That's the key. Yeah, the action of doing it. And, and I'm real big on uh, people needing what you got. You know, mm-hmm. finding your audience. You know, that's why I love the the art of marketing and promoting. You know, because that's a it's like a a challenge. You know, how do mm-hmm. I find these people? Like the person who wants to start that um, podcast for Black men. Okay. How do I get to them? That's the fun of it, you know. That's the fun. Oh, like, man, all right, that's like how do I? Okay, I got this. I got what they need. So it's like, almost like a superhero kind of thing, you know. I just saw uh, Deadpool, you know, and, and oh, I want to see it. You know? I gotta see it. It was good. Don't tell me I gotta see it. Was it. Good. But but I'm all for like you know you're doing your little part to save the world, man. You know you're doing your mm-hmm. part to like to hit the people, you know. Whatever it is that you offer, whatever it may be, you know, even it could be something just for a quality of life, you know, mm-hmm. along. More service, you know, you're making people, people homes look good, you know, mm-hmm. and that could have all kind of butterfly effects. So, but, you know, I, I think that's the thing. It's the purpose, the purpose behind it. So like I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm certifying a bunch of different stuff, but there was a class I used to teach and in that class. We talked about purpose and we talked about specifically, I gave the example. I said, you have two guys, they got families, they're working on this building, right? And I give this example. And I said, they're working on a building and uh, their job is to move bricks from one area, from area A to area B, right? I don't know if you heard this story before, but move bricks from area A to area B. And so that's what they do. Eight hours a day. They go home, they got families. Each father or mother is sitting there with their child and they go, the kid looks at them and go, hey, you know, what do you do at work? You know, parent A goes, well, you know, my job is to move bricks from section A to section B. I just do that every single day. Okay, cool. Parent B goes, well, what do you, the child goes, well, what do you do all day? Parent B is like, well, I move bricks from here to here, section A to section B. 
But moving those bricks from section A to section B allows me to help build the most beautiful cathedral you've ever seen. Like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to have amazing foundation. It's going to have, you know, stained glass windows and, 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 and artistry all throughout. And I'm helping to build that. And I always ask, what's the difference between the two? And they go, the, the class will go, purpose. I say, you're right. Yeah. One person understands what they're really building. Even though they're building the same thing, but one person says, I know what my purpose is. I know what we're building. Yeah. And they have like that, that, that buy-in to yeah. the overall purpose. And I think that's what's missing a lot. I agree. And, and your exact point, that illustration, very much so relates to my big why of the whole mm -hmm. thing. And that's most of us look at it from a selfish lens. We look yeah. at it for yep. this big career, what it's going to do for me, you know? So if it's not right, I'm not going to do it yet because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm scared of how am I going to mm -hmm. look or, but if you realize it's not for you, it's for the greater good, mm -hmm. you, you will be compelled to do it. I've got to do this. Right. Know? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we being honest, most people do it for selfish reasons. Of course. Absolutely. You know? They they really do. It's like, you know, it's so crazy. I know we're going to talk about it, man. I, I, ooh, I can't wait till we talk about one of these topics. I, I'll save it for later. I'll, I'll say what I'm going to say. Um, but people got families to feed, right? You can jump into it. I think they, they, I, they, I, think they, I might they, know what you're talking about. <laughs> you want to start? We're going to start at the bottom? <laughs> Which, whichever one, it don't matter. Start at man. the bottom, now we're here. But uh, so I was, so so one of the, one of the topics that, um, the indicator on here was talking about culture vultures. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, uh, and and what is a culture vulture? I think we got to um, define it because it's it's almost like. So, so look, I looked it up. Okay, I was like, what is the definition of a culture? Well, well, who's the def definition of that? Where did it come oh, from? Oh, I see that. So, the origin of culture vulture. I believe it originated with Dame Dash. Okay, I I, I, I wasn't sure. That's why I kind of yeah. I, I think most people. Based upon my, you know, research indicated that they that Dane was probably the first person that coined the phrase. That coined the phrase. Okay, like that came out of his mouth first, like culture vulture. Culture, like, yeah. Um, did it exist prior to then? Did he hear it from somebody else? Mm, I don't. You know, sometimes that's how, how things work. Yeah. You might hear from somebody else; they may not know. You were like, "Yo, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna use." Who knows? But from when I, I think the origin came from from Dame from Dame Dash, right? But I, I think that was the first thing is how do you define a culture vulture? Yeah. And so uh, I've been I've been looking. Okay. Um, and it says a culture vulture is a person who adopts something from a different community and makes it their own. That's it. That's the definition. Uh, I mean, but if you go to dictionary.com, I think it, I think I'd be a little bit more than that. Too, it really. says a person who is very interested in the arts, especially to an obsessive degree. I was like, oh, uh, a person, hmm. a person considered to be excessively and often, often pretentiously interested in the arts, culture vulture. I think that, well, I guess my point in the whole, the whole topic is kind of like, um, to start the conversation. Cause I think that a culture vulture can vary depending on who you talk to. Even I think the last right. time I was here, we talked about culture, right? Yep. And, I, and, and once again, I think it's it's up to the person to, to define what a culture vulture is. Mm. So, but it's, I think I think it's, it's not a unified. Um, you know, I'm all about the if we're going to define something, it got to be a unified definition. Well, well, I think that's the reason why podcasts like this is important to talk about it to bring the conversation up, so that maybe as a community we can get on the same page, at least to a degree, right? At least. Maybe some of the details of a culture vulture we don't get, but the basic tenets of a culture vulture it could be universal. Maybe. Yeah, like what makes like so we were saying, oh, this person's a culture vulture. How do we know? Well, think about a vulture. I don't know much about. I'm not a big animal person, but I think a vulture is somebody that comes and swoops and takes something, right? Mm -hmm. So, according to your definition, takes something from another culture and it makes it their own. That kind of makes sense. I think it's a little more to it though. I think it's for their own. No, no, I'll let you finish. But I, I was gonna. I think it's a little more sinister than that but even though i mean i guess a vulture oh. can be sinister but i mean a vulture's trying to eat you know what I'm a vulture's eating eating but i mean but a vulture doesn't care what they eat though mm, that's a good one they don't care what they eat at all they they gonna eat any and, and everything that's, that's the big thing with our culture though right because you gotta care about the culture that's 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 one of the 
the telltale signs right there of a culture right. vulture is that you don't, you don't have care. no regard right. for like the respect, especially again, culture is for everybody. Mm-hmm. But as African Americans, we're the backbone of this. So you have to respect African American culture if you don't respect like hip hop culture. You mm-hmm. have to because we are the creators of it. We're the backbone of it. We welcome everybody, but you can't be disrespectful of like black people. You know what I'm saying? Even right. with this, I don't want to jump around too much, but I got to get this thought out here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Let's get it. We have to be careful, okay, in this political season, okay? We mm. have to be very, very careful, okay? And I'm not I'm not going to, you know, make any like um, endorsements and them like that because that's up to you, your research. I'm talking about respect here. Yeah. We got to be real careful in this culture because you, you got all these rappers. And I, I know that's, that's on the topic, oh, no, 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 go ahead. I don't want to jump around, but we got to right. be careful with um, the disrespect of a black woman. You gotta be real careful for that. I'm not saying you gotta vote for Kamala. But what my point is, the disrespect that I'm seeing already mm. by some by black people or non-black people against this woman, you can attack her policies, go for it. Right. That's what it's about. Respectfully. Because I do believe that as a country, we need some civility mm-hmm. going on with our politics, instead mm-hmm. of all this tribalism and this mm-hmm. gang culture in politics. Mm-hmm. But we have to like be real careful because and I'm and I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention as a consumer, mm-hmm. as a future colleague of some of these people. I'm paying close attention to who is disrespecting Kamala Harris as a black woman. Mm. I'm paying, and, and I'm not going to forget it. And I'm going to make sure he that nobody he, forgets it. He ain't going to forget you it. You got to be careful you. because at the end of the day, that's still a black woman. Right. And she should be respected as a black. First of all, all humans should be respected. Right. But if you're black, you especially should respect your own people, period. Mm. So it's some, it's some disrespectful stuff going on, man. <laughs> and, a- and, 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 and I'm watching it. I'm watching it closely, and I'm writing down names, and I, I might He's start calling them out. If because, but I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till they get a little bit more. Because mm. here's the thing: I'm gonna shut up because I'm talking too much. But it's gonna come a point to where the the, the rubber gonna meet the road when mm. it comes to people actually like taking a stand in terms of right and wrong. I'm not talking about right. who they voting for. I'm just talking about like you gonna be respectful. You're not gonna be respectful. Mm. That's a black woman. You, you don't gotta vote for her, but if you're gonna support the other side. Be careful with how you word your stuff and right, how you like because yeah. because we ain't playing about this this because to me it's like the rubber meeting the road like if you you know if you really are about the culture you know what I'm saying <laughs> you you gonna be respectful to a black woman you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. period point blank whether mm-hmm. you vote for her or not whether you support her or not you are gonna be respectful because we ain't t- we ain't tolerating no disrespect so look so period. look I ha- I had we, a- we will shut down your whole career <laughs> hey, you're not you playing gonna, about that are they canceled we gonna are we are we implementing cancel culture? I don't culture? like cancel culture. I'm I don't like cancel culture. I'm, I'm just people. telling you my view. Mm. I'm shutting you down as a person, and I'm expressing my my disappointment with you as a person. And mm. it is what it is. Okay, so so how long get shut down? Um, I'm just saying. Just, the, I don't, all I'm saying is that, I'm gonna say it respectfully. Exactly. So as, so as, I, as a black person, all, all this stuff about she not black or okay. And, so, and, so and, and and calling her like pedophiles like all this weird stuff like t- attack yeah, the policies like, like attack the policies. And, you know, and don't forget that you black. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't forget that because sometimes when you, I don't know, man. It's just, no, that's that's the thing, right, is there's so much division yeah. uh, in, within the black community. I mean, it. I mean, we can go back and look at, and you know, history and understand the the why the division exists for whatever the reason mm-hmm. the, the division exists. But, you know, I had a conversation with a friend earlier today uh, kind of about that. He was like, but is she black, though? I was like, she she is black. Now, whether it was on record by news media as her being black during her tenure, that's complete. I don't control news media. But is she black? I think her father's Jamaican, right? They're trying to do this play that they did with Obama, they when, 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 when Trump won Obama's birth certificate. Remember all that fiasco? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. Come on, like, come on. Let's just stick I, to I get the, it. Let's stick to, I'm not saying you got to vote for the for the one. All I'm saying is well, just... Look, 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 look we're gonna come back to the culture vote because we're gonna talk about that. That really is the first thing on the list. We, we'll come back, but, but it kind of relates. Though, it kind of relates because what I'm seeing, like, I'm just gonna say, the, the Aiden Ross guy, the Aiden Ross, uh, oh, he just did with the um, with, with Trump and, with Trump and, and, and the, and the what's, the, what's the other guy, Steve Will, whatever. Mm-hmm. And these are white men that kind of like dabble in the culture a little bit. That's the culture, they, they, they just say dabble in our culture, they, they try right, to like right, keep right. Yeah. and they bring these black people on their platforms yep. and they try to disrespect. And, Again, it has nothing to do with like who you're voting for. It's more about just respect. Because again, right. if you're operating in our culture, mm-hmm. in hip hop culture, which is primarily backed by black culture, you have to be respectful. You, you gotta, gotta be respectful. You of gotta it. be. You gotta move a certain way. You just have to. For example, I'm in your studio. 
take off my shoes, and I'm I'm acting a certain way because I'm in somebody else's house. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you, you you have to like move. Hey man, use the restroom. You know, not not just going right, right, around yeah, and yeah, just. Yeah. Just, hey, I'm using your restroom. Yeah, and just peeing. With, just, just all be, on the floor. Yeah, what, what you gonna you do have about to be it? Respect, and that's all I'm saying. Right. Yeah. And I the culture, it. culture culture is somebody that comes into somebody space, and they will they they piss all on the culture. Disrespect. Like, I'm just gonna be, yeah. be honest with. They piss all on. Yeah. Culture. Just be, but anyway, but no, 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 no. We'll talk both of those things, right? Because there's some things in, in politics and entertainment that we got to talk about. But okay, so with the whole culture vulture thing, so. I was listening, doing some research, Mm -hmm. uh, and that was kind of what the the direction I was going in. It was identifying culture vultures Mm -hmm. um, and what makes somebody a culture vulture. And what was so crazy is now I normally don't listen to this particular podcast, you know, but it just happened to be the clip, and it just happened to be you know a, a person on on there, and I was like, oh, I got to hear what he got to say about. Okay. And it was and the title was culture vulture, right? And I was like, oh, let me check that out. And so it was talking about, you know, I don't care. I, I'm saying names, but it was talking about Lior Cohen okay. being a yeah. culture vulture, yeah. right? Because Dame, Dame Dash called him a culture vulture. He did, he did. Many times, like many he did. times. He did. And Joe Budden's like, well, I can't really call him a culture vulture, right? Because he's done so much for the hip hop community. But in from what I saw, the question was, why was Lior signing artists that promote drug culture, right? And man, Charlemagne was like, well, that's kind of hypocritical, right? Like, like, well, why are you signing them? And boy, Leo was like, well, because, you know, uh, and and it all came down to the, I got a family to feed. So rec- regardless of anything else that happens in your culture, you yeah. can kill one another, you can use drugs, you can do all this stuff. But I got a, f-. and that's, he literally said, I was like, this, yeah. my mother. He's like, I got a family to feed. Like, they got families to feed, too. But you are culture vulturing, yeah. you know, vulturism. You know. I call it doing culture vulture stuff. Is what yeah, I you're doing culture vulture stuff. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. crazy. Well, that, well, here's the thing, though. It, this is where I land on it. I can get, let me give you my official take on the whole yeah, let's thing. let's get it. Uh, if you want to call Lee or a culture vulture, or let's say Vlad TV, for example, that's, that's another big culture. Vlad. Another big culprit. My thing is this: if, and I'm not taking the position right now either or either way, but my mm-hmm. thing is, if that's a culture vulture, then I'm gonna say it loud and clear. And this is an estimate. Let's say it. Ninety five percent of hip hop is co- are culture vultures, from the media to the executives. Ninety five percent. So if they're culture vultures, not, most of them are. It's a very small percentage that's not culture vultures. Okay, so what would be the small percentage of people that's not culture vultures? Um, okay, I'll give, I'll give you an example. Uh, even though, like, let's talk about the podcast. Let's talk about media. Yeah. 95% of hip-hop media, I'm not even going to call them culture vultures. I'm going to say do culture vulture stuff. Okay. That's how I say it. All right. 95% do culture vulture stuff. Um, there's only a couple platforms. Rap Radar, mm. Elliot Wilson, might be like the only one. Might be one or somebody else out there that, that actually, and here's the, my definition. <laughs> culture vulture stuff. For example, any headline, any headline is clickbait, is culture vulture activity. Um, Pretty much, shoot. you post something in there just for the clicks, and it's not even the main point of what the content is. Oh, that's you know, yeah. that's ninety five percent of hip hop media does this. Of course, that's crazy. I'm estimating, but it's somewhere no, in the nineties. The majority of them do. The majority of them. there's only a few. Like I said, Rap Radar, which they rarely do podcasts. That's right. the only. And then, and here's the thing. They're not as popular. When you and I talked on the phone a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. about me uh, being a part of the podcast, I was telling you my vision. And what I said was because, you know, I don't want to do salacious stuff or, yeah, yeah. or culture. In other words, culture vulture kind of stuff. I understand that, like, we can be very successful, but there's a limit. We will never be as successful as the culture vultures because, mm-hmm. unfortunately, our cultures love that stuff. They love that's it. The reason, they eat it up. That's the reason clickbait exists. They eat it up. So stuff somebody like a rap radar or Elliot Wilson, there's like there's like a there's like a ceiling because they won't go there. Stoop, but what's so low. crazy? I didn't mean to cut you off, brother. No, go what, ahead. What's so crazy is that we don't like culture vulture stuff, but we feed it all the time. Like we feed but, it all. How, but here's the thing: how many I'm people sorry. watch Vlad TV? I how, watch Vlad TV. See, look, like, we, but but we feed, and wait, that's but, the thing, but, right? But, but let me double back a little bit. I'm hesitant to call people culture vultures because if I did, 
everybody would be one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> here's the thing, like, I can, you know, you can say, hey, hey, Brian, I'm, I'm, I'm painting my basement. Can you come mm-hmm. help me paint? I can come over there and help, help, help you paint your basement. I paint it. That doesn't mean I'm a painter, right? So just because you do something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a little less judgy. I'm not going to label people culture vultures just because they do stuff that might be questionable. I'm not going to put that label on them because here's the thing. Everybody's doing it. I'm not going to do it. I th- but I think it's the intent, though. What's the intent behind the action of that person on that podcast, news media, TV show? The intent is success, is success in dollars. I'm going to let's just speak freely. Shannon Sharp, Club Shay Shay. Love Club Shay Shay, but their headlines have become very culture vulturistic, mm. clickbaitish, sowing division and strife. Even the whole Cat Williams interview, mm. sowing division and strife in the culture. Mm. You know, black man against black man and black woman. Monique is on there next and mm-hmm. eating it up. The headlines are crazy. You know, um, Lil Rail was on there. I'm just going to speak, man. Lil Rail was on the mm-hmm. show and the headlines and, the, and some of the clips made it seem like Lil Rail was going at. Um, Cat Williams, when he did, really didn't. But, mm. of course, Cat Williams interview is so popular, oh, yeah. they're going to put his name in the headline and, and frame it one way. Because that's I, culture. And, he, and listen, I love Club Shay Shay, but I'm just telling it like it is. I'm not going to... I'm, I'm, I'm being yeah, real. Yeah, they, they are it. using clickbaity titles. But everybody does it, though. Everybody, I mean, because... Everyone does it. From, from, you can everybody you name it. your favorite media platform and they do it. They all do it. They all do so it. So what I'm saying is if we're going to attack, like, Vlad, in this case... But I think it's the intent. Though. Everybody's do- the intent is to, to get the to, is to get the because it YouTube monetization for example, YouTube monetization. Uh, I think um, Shannon talked about how much he made from YouTube from yeah. the Pat Williams interview, right? And the clips go viral as well. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. It's about making money. It's about getting the clicks so they can get the YouTube mm-hmm. checks and the other checks and the sponsor checks. If that's not if that's not a culture vulture activity, I don't know what is. What I'm saying though is I'm gonna be a little hesitant about giving that label blanket uh, as a blanket, blanket. To everybody. Yeah, because everybody's doing it. And that's the case, the whole culture is is vulturistic. Yeah, but I I think it's is if we look at the definition, it's taking something from one culture and making it your own. Right. So So it, we gotta call it a different name if a black person doing it, we gotta call them a different right? name. But see, that's part of the argument is can a black person be a culture vulture? I think so. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was reading. So look at the whole Kendrick and Drake thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? So because Drake is is black, he's African American technically, right? To, and, he's a and, technically. No, he is. He is. He's, 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 right. He, he's a black person, but but this whole thug image that Kendrick is is saying he 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 not about is dangerous. Mm-hmm. That's a culture vulture activity, if it, right? He don't come from that, right? Right, right. So he's black. So we're gonna call him something different. Yeah. A, a culture. <laughs> I don't know, a culture devourer or something. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> but it, it, what I'm saying so, is that we gotta be we, we gotta be uh consistent. We can't be we can't just attack the white folks that, that are quote unquote doing this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. When Eric, Charlemagne, oh my gosh, he, he built his whole career off being messy and, and being well and his whole career. But see, that's the thing. That. Is 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 being messy and being gossipy is that yes, because it's bringing it's bringing out the, I'm gonna answer your question, it's bringing out the worst in the culture, it's bringing out the negative stereotypes of black people. Well, it's it's definitely doing that. But is it being a culture vulture, though, where if we're looking at the debt, right, going back to the definition mm-hmm. of somebody who's not part of that culture, taking something from that culture and making it their own. Right. So like like Vlad. Right. Or like Adam 22 or, mm-hmm. you know, with no jumper or. Um, Leor Cohen or, you know, Jimmy Ivey, you know, any anybody who's not black. But taking black culture and adopting it and making it their own does now they may be doing activities that bring a negative perspective and stereotype and viewpoint and perspective within the black community. But is it really culture vulture where they are the intent for me, the it's the intent. The intent is to how want to use co-op kind of yeah it's it's kind of like take advantage of black culture for my gain and not paying any type of respect uh, or doing anything in the community doing anything to move hip hop music forward or R and B music or black music in general right so me to me that's what a culture vulture is is somebody who comes in 
and says, hey, I'm going to be a part of your culture, but I don't want nothing to do with the people, with anything else that's in there. I don't want to, your struggle, I can't even identify with that. But I do want to make music off what you're doing, nor do I want to help you in any kind of way. I want to give you crappy deals so that you don't benefit, but I benefit and my family benefits and my legacy benefits. But nothing that you do is going to, I don't care what you do. Like the whole Leo Corrin thing, he was like, yeah, I got to eat. So I'll continue to push drug music for the rest of my life if that's what I got to do, as long as me and my family family eat. Yeah, but again, even that, though, I, I think Charlamagne was kind of out of pocket. I think he was really, <laughs> he was literally trying to, trying to trip the man up and to get him to, get, and to, get him to say something that, that may be perceived as foul because he's got him in a little game. Yeah, but that's correct. In, in, in my opinion. That may be true. Because I, I know Leor's story, man. I, I think Leor uh, might be an a, a-hole. You know what I mean? Right. But I think that he's a good bit. I think he's done a lot of positive for the culture, in my and, in my humble opinion. And, and that was Joe Button's that was Joe Button's perspective is that why he couldn't call Leo a culture vulture was because he's done so much for for hip hop. And it's like, yeah, he, he just couldn't do it. And so Well, again, just to kind of like I guess wrap up my, my point of view, um, I think that uh <laughs> yeah. that we got to be careful because the culture vulture activities have is rampant in a, in the hip hop community, you know, and this, and mm-hmm. whether or not you can label a, a black person, a culture vulture or not, the things that are happening at the hands of black people are right on par with the best culture vultures that might not be black. So mm. it's all kind of from, from the shade room to, again, there might be some other ones I'm not thinking of. I know Elliot Wilson is, is one, um, shout out to, uh, I don't this, Small, well, not they're not small. They're pretty big, but um, dead end hip hop out of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. That's another good one. That's I have not seen culture vulture stuff from them for for the years that I've been rocking with them. But it's very few, man. This is very, it's very, very few. few. Uh, and I consume it all. Very I just kind of uh, my old pastors used to say when you get a message, you know, eat the hay, chew out the stick, something like that. Like mm. you consume was for you, was not for mm-hmm. you. Because like Vlad, for example, I used to hate Vlad. Until I got in the, until I got into podcasting and realized like, and 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 research what his purpose is. He wants to document everything in the mm-hmm. culture, and he's a, I think an excellent docu- documentarian. Is that, is that a word? Doc, it's that word today. He's a, he's very great at like documenting culture. So mm-hmm. his, his 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 view is hundred years from now, he wants to be able to you to play one of his interviews and mm-hmm. learn about this time that we're in right now. I think he does a great job, even with all the questions, and interrogations. He's yeah, because really that it. boy. Now, do I think he's like disrespectful at times? Absolutely. A lot of his little, you know, snide remarks, and mm-hmm. I'm like, hold on, he got to, you better, you better watch yourself. Mm-hmm. But that's some different Charlemagne. Charlemagne do the same thing, exact same thing. Now, is it well? Okay I mean, because Charlemagne is black. Th- that's the question, right? Does he have the ability to do that? Because he's disres- a. I think disrespect is disrespect, man. Mm-hmm. In my humble opinion, you know what I mean. And I don't like how either one of them had it, but I respect Charlemagne. I respect the brand he's built, his network. I, I respect the heck out of that. But does he only does the Charlemagne only do it to people that aren't black, or does he do it to people that are black too? Absolutely, and I think the same thing with Vlad. Mm. The exact same thing, mm-hmm. you know, from the from the Nick Carter interviews. I'm sorry, the Aaron Carter interviews to the all the you know. I literally went went down a whole rabbit hole the last couple of years of, of mafia. Uh, mm-hmm. Podcast because of Vlad because he interviewed all these mafia guys. Now <laughs> now I'm following them in their podcast. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And Navy SEALs, you know all right. the stuff, man. So I just think that you know we got to be careful with co- we got to define it first of all. Which I, th- I think I think we've we've, we've got to be defined. We've got to done defined. that a little bit today, right. and we've got to be consistent with with it. And if we're gonna talk about it, you know, make sure we're not participating mm-hmm. in that when we make our titles for our stuff. Let's not be salacious and let's mm-hmm. be I, and if we're gonna talk about this this salacious stuff, talk about it with integrity and balance and and, and, and positivity and from mm-hmm. an educational standpoint, not to be messy. You know, you don't gotta talk about everything. Some things can just be and see and, and that's that that's my issue with, with with this ain't this ain't the Vlad podcast, but that's my issue with Vlad. It's like you know some things you you asking y'all really shouldn't be talking about. But to me, there's a difference between documenting hip hop. And asking questions in a way that he does to ascertain gossip information. Like to me, that that's a difference. I can document hip hop, but for me, what he does, if I was to label, you know, use that label of culture vulturism, 
uh, it, it would definitely be applied to. I don't know. I'm kind of to, to like I'm, a Vlad. I'm kind of on the fence because I used to. I used to, and it's okay. We just talk. We, we're talking yeah, about, yeah, of course. and I think this is important because as you enter into the music business, and you got to be aware, you got to know where where your stand is. I think you know talking, where your stance is. You got to know where your stance is. You got to know who you rock with, who you don't rock with. And we who just, rock with you? And we just talking. <laughs> right, and we just we just talking. You all that are listening might disagree. You might have. You can put it in the comments. We can have a civil discourse. But it's important to like bring these things to light because we can't be walking around and ignoring this stuff. Like calling one person coach a vulture, but another person's doing it. And at least that's some rules about it, you know. <laughs> so maybe I guess if you're black, I guess it's cool to do. In my opinion, it's not cool to do, no matter what your color is. But I don't know. But let's, <laughs> well, I don't think it's I don't think it's cool, right? Because it, that's kind of like. If I'm black, then I'm I'm the culture. So, am I is is Charlemagne like a gatekeeper of the culture? Some would argue he is, yeah. And and so does he have the the quote unquote right to challenge anybody that indicates or says that they are part of this culture? Does he have the right to? Call them on their stuff to verify or validate what, whether they what, are. What about when he's supporting the culture? What about that? Who's going to call him out? I, I think that's, and I think that's the accountability part, right? Is that we hold each other accountable yeah. for the things that happen and take place within our own culture, and and I think that's that's the message that D one is talking about, right? I don't know uh-huh. if you've been following. I've been following D one. Following D one, right? Is is that's kind of the message he's talking about? Accountability in hip hop for, right? And if that's the case, then we can. Like you said, ninety five percent of, of hip hop would be classified as doing culture vulture type of activities, mm-hmm. right? So, so I was, so I was. No, as go a, ahead. As a, I think, we, I think this might be a part of one of the questions. I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah. If you're an artist, though, let's just say, let's just assume. I don't. I'm not gonna label again. I said several minutes ago that I'm not one to label everybody that culture vulture, even though they do culture vulture stuff. Mm-hmm. If you're an up and coming artist, though. And you got a chance to be on Vlad or on No Jumper with Adam Twenty Two or The Breakfast mm-hmm. Club, you know, who all I think, I think most of this media does culture vulture stuff. But let's just say Vlad, for example, if you have a chance to get on there, do you not go on there, or are, are you compromising your integrity by going on the Vlad TV, even mm. though he's arguably the big one of the biggest platforms in mm-hmm. hip hop. You know, so that's and I'm not giving you an answer to that. I'm just saying think about this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, think about that. And be and know who you are when you get into the industry. Right. Know, know who you are and know where your lines are and where your lines mm-hmm. are. And stand on business and, and just trust God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So but at least know Gosh. at least because a lot of times what happens though, Brian, is people they they want to get on so bad they have no principles. Or they lose their principles and they just do whatever, anything goes, and they right. wonder why they're not moving forward. Right. You know what I mean? At least, at least Cause I know for me for years, I hate to keep missing him, Vlad, but I had a a hard stance on not liking him, and I mm. and I kind of changed the stance. But at least I like, you know, know where I stand mm-hmm. morally on the inside. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And I just think that if you are an artist out there, I think it's okay to go on platforms. Just be you. Bring, just be you. Bring your energy to the platform. Right. You know? Right. Bring your energy. Bring your morals. Bring your perspective to that platform. Kind of like what um. Uh, what's my man's name? Uh, with all the tattoos on his face, um, not it's not Mac Miller. It's um, okay. Yeah, what's my man's name? He, he, I'm uh, never really good with names. A rapper? Yeah, he's a rapper. He's a white guy. Oh, uh, MGK no, Millie. No, no, no. no, who? Millie? Nah. MGK Millie. Nah, nah. Uh, but he was on. But he was on the Breakfast Club, and Charlamagne tried to play him, and he just remained himself. He remained calm. Oh, so you're talking about? Uh, he was on a show. A uh, Dave. A little dicky? Nah, what's his name? Oh, he got tattoos. Man, what's it? I'm not good with names. I'm I straight. I can see his Post Malone. Okay. Dang. He did have the Post Malone. He, he did. did. He, he, did he, he came Malone. for Post Malone. He like, did. but then once again, does like does Charlemagne have the ability because he is a gatekeeper of the culture to to? Ch- but what? But my whole point is that Post Malone remained Post Malone through that entire. He didn't let Charlemagne get under his skin. He answered him appropriately. He stuck to his guns. Whatever morals he had, he stuck to those morals. And I think that's the thing. A lot of people compromise who they are for the bag, right? And we all know, okay, they're going to make me give up something. I'm going to have to sacrifice something, right? Compromise. We talk, I think we talked about that the last time. Or conforming. It, it, the, the pressure is going to be there. Yeah. They're going to be like, hey, if you want to 
you want to be a part of this, you're going to have to do some of this. Right. And it's like, do you want to do that? Like there's been many talented artists who came into this business and no longer in this business because of those types of things. And I think from your perspective, as you're saying, you got to, you got to count the costs. Is, is the cost of me going on Vlad, is that going to be beneficial to my career or, you know, Adam 20, you know, no jumper or DJ academics or whoever. Oh, I'm right? about Aki. People don't, right? don't, they don't like Aki at yeah. all either. So, so um, I was watching an interview with Dame and they do it. He said, would you, would you consider DJ academics, a, um, culture poacher? And Dane was like, see, I'm not answering that. You're just trying to get clickbait. It makes me wonder, is somewhere in Dane's mind, does he think academics, because academics do be doing some click, some culture vulturism type stuff. Everybody, again, Everybody again, does in it. In my opinion, 95% Everybody does, does it. it. You know what I'm saying? Because they're the ones that are successful, you know? So I don't know, man. I don't know. I just, I think it's a, a good conversation to have. Yeah. You know, because I, we, I agree. To, we need to know this when we are here, like, making these declarations about why he go on Vlad, why he do this, you know, why do you go anywhere, really? I mean, it's a media <laughs> outlet. Yeah. I mean. So, I don't know, man, it's, but. It's a media outlet. I don't know, man, but I, but I think that um having some integrity, man, and discussing the topics in the, in, the, in the right way is very important for all the artists that want to do media, that mm. want to get in the podcast. I think that you can discuss the current events and discuss the stuff without being exploitive. You know what I'm saying? You can do that and you don't got to like, you know, be ratchet. You know what I mean? Like you don't got to be that. Even though like I know you might get to the top a little bit faster, but I don't think it's worth it, man. Because at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, you know, you know that you're a culture. Oh, a lot of people, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like, oh, I sleep well at night. You know, know. And my bank account is is nice. I know. I know you know, man, and that's, know. and that'd be the thing, right? Is bank account replaces morality. And it's like, hey. Yeah. Like pieces of paper. Yeah. It's more important than who you are as an individual. Yeah. And people like, well, people would, yeah. What I found though, Brian, is people will justify anything. They, you know, they'll find a way Quickly. to just, when they make up their mind on what they want to do. And this is just not just with the music business, this is with life and period, mm -hmm. relationships. People will justify all their actions some kind of way, some kind of way in their mind to make themselves believe that this is the right thing to do. So, sure. Some people you just gotta just let it be, man. Just let sure. the, let the universe work it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So I I mean I think the whole point of that conversation, one, we gotta define what a culture vulture is. Right. And I don't know if, if Dame really the clearly defined culture vulture and what the behaviors are of a culture virtue uh, of a culture vulture. Uh, and then how do we identify them, right? Like, you know, like like so, right, like in the Bible. How do you identify a false prophet? It told you. It literally told you. Here are the signs of a false prophet. Well, how, well, how come we don't have that, right? We were talking about last time culture. How do we define that? We should have tenets. We should have behaviors. We should have actions. We should be able to see or to know concretely what the evidence is or behaviors of a culture vulture is, right? So I, I think that's the kind of the, the thing is if we're going to identify it, we're going to be able to, to label people I guess label people as that. We got to have at least some identif you know, markers that say this is what it is. Yeah, well, again, like we said before, we got to define what culture is first. Because yeah. even if when you I can't define culture, because even, 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 <laughs> even when I mentioned right. what I mentioned Aiden Ross and I mentioned the other guy, yeah. you really, you're like, is that culture? And I'm like, well, no, but where's the line? Because they do, like, I think Aiden had a YG on the show yesterday and he was mm -hmm. asking him, did he still feel the same way about, about Trump as he did when he made the, the F Donald Trump song, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We got to define culture, but I think we, I think we're on the right pathway. I think we're on the right path. And I think that there's going to always be, you're going to have the the center where it's dark, where it's like mm -hmm. black and white, but on the outskirts, you're going to have a little gray in terms mm -hmm. of what, what culture is, you know, but we at least need to get that black part or the, or the solid part, solid, black and white. And then the gray part is going to always be gray. And people going to always like, well, I don't know, but at least define the basics of what culture right. and the basics of what a culture vulture is. And I think clickbait is culture vulture. When you making <laughs> clicks, when you making headlines to sow strife and discord among the brethren in the community, mm. you're acting like a culture vulture. Yeah, like a culture vulture. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I said all this stuff. I make my little videos. Do, do people man. like, well, how how else can I, you know, get their attention? Because I mean, the reality is, as we put a bow on this one, as the reality is, basic topics don't get people to, you know, titles. People don't click basic titles. Once again, because people like messy stuff. 
So if I got a thing on there that says LL Cool J didn't mention Nas and Jay-Z uh, and, you know, as, you know, the top, the Rushmore of Def Jam. Oh, my gosh, I got to see who he named. It's clickbait is, right? And so it's like you, that's how you get people to watch your stuff. You know, but if it shows, once again, for me, it's, it's the intent behind it. Is that intent to cause strife and division amongst the brethren? Even if, and, and, and once again, if you go back and think about it, who, my intent can be pure, but the other person can perceive it differently. Another person's perspective will be like, hey, he's so in discord and, and, you know, within the, the the community, he mean like, no, I'm not. I'm just dating. He he didn't. He left off Jay Z, DMX. Right. Guys. He left off Jay Z yeah, and DMX yeah. and what? And and, and Brad, I mean, again, we, that might it, be that might be in the, in the gray a little bit because I can, I, I can, it, it's headline worthy, but at the same time, what about Slick Rick, Public Enemy, people he did name? Yeah, the Beastie Boys, right? You know, himself. <laughs> yeah, he did, of course, <laughs> of course. He was like, I'm the first artist <laughs> but that they you, ever signed. You're gonna do that. So what's? They're both true, but. You know, right? And 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 Shannon did ask him about the whole omission, right? So I get it, but he did at the same time, you know, especially with LL and Jay Z having like a, lo- a long standing beef right. or perceived beef over the years, mm-hmm. it's kind of playing to that, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, man, I can squash all of that right now. Red Man is Def Jam, okay? Red Man, like, look, go back and look at all the interviews where they talk about. Def Jam and who, and who makes up that Red Man is Def Jam. Who said? Who even said that? Leo himself. <laughs> Leo himself said Red Man is Def Jam. What about Warren G? They said Warren G saved Def Jam. But it's with his with his album, his first album. They they said Def Jam. R- Russell Simmons said Def Jam was literally about to like bankrupt. You know all mm-hmm. this stuff, and I think we you get an artist like Warren G on there. Yeah, it's gonna kind of revive it. A little bit. Because remember, they were hot as fish grease, the West Coast was, you know. They were hot as fish grease, you know. Uh, Death Row and Death Row fumbled Warren G. They had him. They, they fumbled <sighs> him, you know what I'm saying? And he fell right into, um, yep. in the laps of, uh, what was his name? Rest in peace. Uh, Chris Lighty. Oh, yeah. Oh, know? yeah. And, uh, and Lee or those guys at Def Jam. And they say he saved it. So I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> but again, that's... I'm not I'm not trying to like be judgmental and police, you know. Right. I'm just trying to just say that like it's a better way to kind of mm-hmm. like and I'm I'm speaking to media people right now, folks that do podcasts that like, right. you know, aspire to have a voice. And like I said in the last time I was here, if you got a if you got a, an opinion, t- do it. I encourage. I'm not one of those Put people to say comments. it's too many podcasts. No, if you want to do it, go for it. Right. But what I'm saying is what we don't need is culture more cultural just what we don't need is more culture vultures what we don't need is more negative podcasts what we don't need is more gossip podcasts messy podcasts you know we got enough of those we got we got enough and so i'm i'm almost tired of seeing them i hear you but, man, wait, I'm almost but it's, it's, so okay it's, it's a balance though it's a bad i mean because i think that to, to retract i think the ll who jay's about nas and, and jay-z if you word it right i think that's fair i think it's fair to, mm. to, to that. Because here's the thing, because I'm just thinking about that. Because if you do it right, though, mm. if you have a proper discussion, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember recently with the whole Drake and Kendrick thing, mm. you know, what I discussed on my platform was relationships in the music business. Right. You know, and I brought the and people, they they let me have it over this one. Because Kendrick was <laughs> on top of it. And all I'm saying, simply asking was, you know, folks like YG and, mm. um, who Drake helped mm-hmm. and folks like uh, DeMar DeRozan, who was, you know, mm-hmm. is it disloyal? And, you know, to all of a sudden he clearly lost the battle. Right. Um, uh, Drake did. So now you just going to abandon your friend, you know, and, and mm-hmm. everybody, Drake helped a lot of people in the industry, a lot of folks, yeah. and nobody like stood up for him. So I think gang stood up for him a little bit. And, that, mm-hmm. and he even went against his own coast almost. But nobody really stuck up for so I'm, I'm asking, and they let me have it, boy. I'm on, sure. On, on I'm sure. Stuff. I didn't care, but not, but I was very respectful, and I never said, right. I never said that that uh, Drake won or mm. or Kendrick was whack. I I called it how it was. I'm just saying it, it's a question though, because right, right. what I find though is people are fake in the industry. That's what, that was kind of my point. Oh you know, yeah, the of whole course. thing. How, how do you navigate? And if you get in the industry. Please just try to be loyal to you. You don't got to like take a side, but at least don't you on stage with a man. And yeah, and, I mean, and I don't know. But anyway, 
my point is if you word stuff right and, and you make it right. for teaching purposes, let's say you want to talk about the significance of Def Jam artists mm. and that's your whole clip. You want to, you want to talk about it from that standpoint. That could be done properly, so it's kind of gray, it's kind of gray over there. But you know, yeah. but if you if you saying Jay Z, uh, LL, this is Jay Z, you know, you know, on it, and this isn't. Yeah, that and, that's a different. But see, once again, that's that's clickbait, right? Because you going, you definitely gonna watch that. What LL, this Jay Z? Oh, I gotta see what he said. So, and and that's not even probably what he said. He was just like, he's not, he's not on my Mount Rushmore because he was like, he was like, yeah, they came like a thousand years later. I yeah. was like, that that's. One, that means you've been on Def Jam for a yeah, long time. From the beginning, so. I mean, he was in the beginning, so. I'm being long-winded, man, but basically. No, 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 that's let's, good, let's, let's, let's not be culture vultures. Let's not be culture vultures. Let's not um, do that, man. You know, speaking of of stuff, um, we started talking about politics and Kamala and Trump yeah. um, and all of that. And, like, I had a, I had a, a good conversation today with a, a good friend of mine about this whole, just this whole thing. Um, and more specifically about. Kamala's, and I don't even want to say just hers. I mean, we can we can compare and contrast her rally with Trump's rally, right? And what Trump had and who he had versus who she brought out and what she has, right? And I, and I know you know as as we were talking about some of the going over some of the questions as we were preparing for this um, for this episode, um, you know, it it stood out. It's like so we we look at the first one, right? So should artists celebra- celebrities endorse politicians? Do they have any credibility and or expertise to lend here? I mean, for me, they're they're people, right? People mm-hmm. are people. Absolutely. They're going to support whoever they want to support. They just have a larger platform to voice who they want to support. Um, but they're, I mean, they're going to do what everybody else does. They're going to go stand in line or maybe cast a um, absentee ballot, whichever one they do, yeah. right? Because they are at a certain platform. I mean, I can't imagine seeing, you know, Jay Z in line voting. Like, yeah, I'm here to vote, right? And so, you know, however they vote is however they're going to gonna vote. But they're people. They're humans. I mean, they have the right to vote. They have a right as anybody else to say, I support this particular candidate oh, yeah, for, for, sure. for presidency, right? Um, but what about the influence, though? You know, the average person may not have the influence that a Quavo has, for example. Right. You know? they, so, they may not. But it's Quavo, you know, has he shown any proof that he evidence that he's educated enough that he has credibility to know what the issues are, to know about like gun control, immigration, uh, economics, foreign policy? Is, you know, does he is he versed right. enough to really like? So does, and I'm not attacking him because I think right, yeah, no, no, I I'm it. just saying as far as because you're right, he has the right to. He's a he's a human, but yep. as other as consumers of of his his art, are we to take that seriously? You know, based on his credentials or lack of, or lack thereof, or lack thereof. Um, I mean, it's it's it's, an, uh, it's all opinion to me. I mean, if does he have or does anyone have credibility when it comes to supporting their? Because because see, for me, it's 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 just support. Hey, I'm here to support my person. Here, I'm here to tell you why I support them. Now, once you go off and you start talking about economics and politics and okay, well, okay, wait, now you got to slow your roll a little bit because you don't have any expertise in that particular field. How do I know? Because you've never done anything that talks about that field previously, right? You don't, you don't have any white papers. You don't have any articles. You don't have any books. You don't have any podcast episodes, press releases, nothing that validates or gives you credibility that you can actually speak on that particular topic, right? And I think that's the thing. Like, how do we... How do we know who to listen to if they aren't credible? Because they have that platform. They can just jump on a stage and be like, hey, I think you should vote for this particular person. Okay, but why though? What what about their politics do, do we agree with? What about their politics do we, you know, base our own perception around that says, oh, we should vote for? And that's kind of the conversation I had today with my friend. He was like, I keep asking people, why should I vote for Kamala? He said, I'm not voting for Trump. He said, but why should I vote for Kamala, though? And nobody, he's like, nobody can really tell me. He said, all they can tell me is that she's black. And he's like, that's, he's like, that's great. I'm glad that she's black. I'm not saying who you should vote for. But, but I can give you one reason. Like, to, give me her politics, though. Well, I can tell you she's probably going to not push for elections to, to uh, 
to stop term limits. She, she's probably going to keep term limits there. <laughs> she ain't going to get no reparations. But um, anyway. <clears throat> oh, no, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, though, like one person is, is telling people that don't worry, I'm going to get rid of term limits. You don't got to vote. Right. You don't yeah. got to vote no more after four years. Right. One, one, one person wants to be a, a for life dictator. <laughs> so right. I don't know, man. But anyway. um, For life dictator. I don't know, man. It's it's, it's all spooky. I, it's gonna be real interesting in the next few months. It's gonna be but, interesting. But going back to artists, though, because I always want to bring this back to the to an independent level for mm -hmm. for those that are watching, stepping into your platforms, because this is an opportunity for you to really kind of like show who you are, you know, in these next few months. If mm -hmm. you're independent, speaking to folks, but at the same time, my question to you is: in doing so, do you risk alienating people? Because you you can galvanize folks, right? Oh yeah. Let's say you're a Trump supporter. You will get all the Trump's the people, people to buy your music, but then you alienating all these, or do you play it safe? Do you do Kevin Hart and just play it safe and just like not even talk about politics? Have your own politics, but, mm -hmm. don't, but don't voice them. Just stick to the music. Mm. So what, you know, what, what, what does a, a up and coming artist to do? I mean, are people still buying R. Kelly albums? If he was making an album, do they still listen to 12 play? Yeah, but R. Kelly has, <laughs> R, R. Kelly has proof, proof. R. Kelly, like, you know, he's done proven himself. You know, like, even even Quavo and making a stallion to a point, they already made it. But what about the ones that are trying to come out there? Yeah, I mean, I think for the people who are trying to voice their perspectives on which candidate they are for, I think that once again they got to count the cost. I th I think they have to count the point. cost. Yeah, because whoever you are going to support, you are supporting that person's brand you are saying that you align with that person's morals and with that person's politics in my opinion right if i align with trump that means i have some in my head that agrees with his positions on a lot of stuff or not a lot of stuff like it's 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 a for me it's a dangerous slippery place to be because you're going to eventually align yourself with somebody and that's how you find commonality about people. Oh, we think the same way. Or, or, or we behave the same way. Or we represent things the same way. And that's how you start to develop like friendships with people, right? There's commonality. And I think with independent artists who want to use their platform to voice who they want to align with from a, a, candidacy, a, a candidacy perspective, that is going to impact their, their brand. Because now you're saying, if you stand with Trump, you agree with his behaviors, his actions, his politics, his morals, and you're aligning yourself with that. Or what if you just say, look, I don't agree with everything, but here's why I'm supporting Trump, because I strongly believe in uh, stopping abortion. And, right. and, and he's already proven that he's going to get Supreme Court justices to overturn Roe v. Wade, which they already did. So, right. And I don't want it to go back. So that supersedes him grabbing girls by their genitals or whatever. Right. That, that supersedes you know, all the, the dictatorship, you know, so, yeah, you know, so I mean, I guess it's a way to do it, but f me personally, I feel like it depends on what your brand is. Like if you are somebody who talks about social justice, for example, in your, if, in your music, or if you are, mm -hmm. this is, this is a funny one here. If you're a Christian rapper mm -hmm. or Christian, Christian artist, which is crazy because all these Christians support Trump and it's just, it blows my mind. It literally like, it literally blows my mind. Like, mm. like Mr. Grabbing by the, you know mm. what, but that's, I don't know, man. It's, mm. it, it, it's, it's funny, but anyway. well, a lot of it has to do with politics. A lot of it has to do with the abortion, the, mo the, the moral, the, yeah, the moral morality and, uh, of, and, um, in line alignment with God's word now, because I'm a Christian, but so am I. I'm not voting for Trump though. I'm just, I I'm, I'm just stay. I'm just telling you, like, but, but because of that, it, it's a lot of it deals with his the Republicans' perspective, like the, the whole abortion thing. I'm not down with that. Now I, I'll say it on here. I don't really care, right? I'm not down with that. I'm pro life. I'm not down with you know. I'm not down with any of that. But that's why a lot of Christians align themselves with Republicans because Democrats. They were like, we we want to, we don't care what at what stage it is. Just, eh. mm. and, and a lot of Christians are like, yeah, I can't get down with that because in God's oh, law. Man. I don't want to. Yeah. But yeah, I, I get it. I trust me, I get it. Yeah, because, but yeah. but there's a behavioral side too, right? And it's like, 
and and that's the thing is if for independent artists, if you are aligning yourself and being vocal about who you are supporting, you have to understand that that is going to impact your visibility is going to impact your brand as an artist. You are probably going to be shunned. And I know that you're probably going to be because I've already seen people doing that on Instagram. My whole issue is with this whole thing. I don't care who you vote. I don't care who you vote for. Just don't be disrespectful to other people because they don't side with who you going to vote for. Yeah. Like, don't shame other people because they ain't voting for Kamala. Don't shame other people because they ain't voting for Trump. Vote for who you want to vote for, but don't shame. Uh, I, uh, bro, I don't seen so many posts. Yeah. Or well, the whole Quavo thing. Quavo, uh, his name is Steve Will, Steve Will Do It, whatever his name mm, is. I think so. He was calling Quavo a pedophile. This is after the the Republican, no, the Democratic, um, the little show, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, show the, the rally, <laughs> the, the, the right. rally they had with, with Megan Thee Stallion and right, Quavo. Right. Which we got to talk about. Oh my gosh, but, yeah. yeah. But but he was calling Quavo all kind of pedophiles and all that. And it's, and I'm like, he just shoots two for defamation, number one. And yeah, and that I'm attacking yeah. him because he supports Kamala Harris. So I don't know, man. I just, but to your point about the whole um, the rally, uh, Megan Thee Stallion appeared at Kamala Harris's rally. She did, and she performed. Though. She did. She didn't just come and talk. She performed. She did. Where twerking like three was, songs. she was she was doing the thing where they, you know, she was she was clapping. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and. I saw a boy Wonder put a tweet out. I saw that saying, you know, somebody how it was crazy. So I don't know, but I saw that. Listen, and you know, how'd you feel about how'd you feel about her performance at that rally? Man, my stomach kind of turned a little bit, man. I just think it was kind of it's very cringy. Mm. It's very cringy. I think that uh, Megan Stallion, she's a college degree. She's an educated woman. You know what I'm saying? She was dressed appropriately. She had on a nice business suit, but I think that that was you could just. Show up and just talk. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You mm-hmm. don't gotta like twerk. You could just. You could just. But that's part of her brand. But also, no. She's talking about being a hottie. Is because what I found out with the whole hot girl summer thing, I was attacked because I said that's all she's about. But I was no. She's about education. She has a college degree. She's about mm-hmm. independent and woman empowerment and all this stuff. You could have talked about that at the rap. You don't have to twerk. Like, but ain't, that's not what makes and, money though. Yeah, but I just think that uh, that uh, that wasn't a good move. Mm. On, on from the Harris campaign, that wasn't a good. That wasn't a good look. But even on the Republican side, though, was yeah. equally as laughable. They had Amber Rose, the slut walk lady, <laughs> the slut walk <laughs> <Right>. lady, <laughs> with a tattoo on her on her on her on her on her forehead, who does nothing. No, no, not a, not a singer, not a not a rap. Not. She she dated Kanye West and got famous. That's a whole another show about about <laughs> about about the marketing strategy of putting people with with. With, that, with certain people and getting them famous. Is, we, is, that, we, is that a culture vulture? We could do a whole show on that about like, and this is for independent artists, you know, do you want to get with the right person, you know, have a relationship with the right person mm-hmm. to blow your brand up, whatever. She is famous because Kanye West. All right. She was with she wasn't famous before then. No, at all. And the slut walk, you know what I mean? And now she's front and center at the Republican National Convention. Bro, what is going on? Are we living in the simulation, or what, what is happening right now? So, both right, both parties right now are like clowning right, right now, right, right, with, right, with their endorsements. It's clowning. It's right clowning. Now. It's clown. It's it's turning into a circus. A circus. A, a, it, it is turning into a circus, though. Um, I will say, I was glad to see that she was properly dressed, mm-hmm. right? Um, at least in some type of business attire or something like that. Um, I seen a lot of comments that was like, y'all just need to get over yourself. It's just music. But no, music is deeply impactful there's and a, far reaching. It's a time and place. Right. It's it's always a time and season for for everything. As adults, everybody got a little freaky side, whatever. That's cool. But not at the not when it's time for business. Not when it's time for business. You don't go to church and do that, right? You're not gonna twerk at church. Is, is, is well, that what's next? Well, twerking well, in church? Is, well, that the, is that the next thing? <laughs> well, it depends on what church you go to, Atlanta. I mean, uh, uh, I'm depends, just, on what, depends on what church I'm you go. Just I saying, could, look, there's a time and place that was not the time for that performance. It just look, wasn't. Look, we can, we don't seen swag stuff at church. Look, oh, they they not look, like us. The church. Look, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. Yes, they will. They they would do all that at church, depending on what type of church you go to. But anyway, that's crazy. But man. yeah, that's yeah. That's, I, that's a whole nother. Yeah, I got a whole thought process on 
on that. But again, I'm going to lose friends over that one. But again, I want to keep reiterating, those of you watching this, as you're entering these spaces, these are all things. This this is the, the landscape we're trying, to, we're trying to paint for you. We're trying to help you, equip you with making the right decisions because yes, you're entering this landscape. Like I said, these next few months, the election is going on. You can like have a serious impact on your career by, by how you proceed. Yeah, for sure. When it comes to the, this whole election thing. So we're kind of laying out some ideas, just putting it in your head mm-hmm. on what's going on out here. Was it messy? I would say at least she was dressed, right? I mean, I, I think that's the the perspective I can give on that. She was probably dressed. She wasn't out there shaking her. I mean, she was. She was shaking. But she was. But, yeah. I mean, it was there was pants, pants behind. It wasn't just yeah. as we normally would see her, uh, you know, in music videos or at other concerts but what and shows. what the songs but, had to do with... with, with, with what else she going to sing? What the, else she going to rap? She got other songs that... My thing is she, exactly. didn't, she didn't even have to do no, no songs. She just go up there and just talk about the stuff. You went to college, right? You had a degree. Talk about, like, they, about the yeah, issues nah. and, and about, like, them. why you're supporting her. Again, earlier. Now. About what research you have done that you want your hotties to know. Hey, hotties, this is... Kamala Harris to stand on abortion, on on women's sure. rights, on equal pay, sure. on whatever, on like Palestine. Th- this is how she feels, and this is why I'm rocking with her, you know. And it show your intellect a little bit. But she didn't do that. She wanted they they contracted her to to perform. They wanted Man. her to perform. She chose those songs, and it's like here, I'm I'm here to do my job, and, and that's kind of what people. I'm here to do my job as an artist, which is to perform at this particular rally now. I, I don't think I've listened to any Meg the Stallion, Stallion's songs. I'm not, a, I mean, I don't listen to her music. So I don't know if she has music that reinforces Kamala's message. And I think that's part of the issue for me is here you are, a, a presidential candidate. And the music that is being played at your rally is not indicative of the position that you hold or the brand that you want to represent to the voters. And it's like, it, oh, it's, is that how Kamala is? That's that's kind of like the the thought process. Well, they're playing this music. Does she associate herself with that music? Is that culture vulture activity? Is that because culture? <laughs> is that... Am I gonna exploit this these negative stereotypes to get votes? That's what a lot of people said. Well, Trump is coming out to many men by fifty cent everywhere he goes. But has he come out to it? Trump. Or, or many has, men? yeah. So, so like today, I saw Aiden Ross do a they live stream. Yeah. He played many men. He Trump didn't. No, but they, they, they played it when Trump got a uh, allegedly shot. I think it was glass. They did, him. but I don't think I don't think Trump played it. I think other people did. No, at the Milwaukee, at the he had a rally in Milwaukee. Oh, he did. He did play men. And they played many men right they after did. that. And it's like they did. You know, they did. I think, I think they played at the RNC, if I'm not mistaken. They did. Oh. They yeah, did play many. They did. You know, <laughs> So again, we're being they did we're being balanced here. There, it's, it's a lot of it's, it's, it's a lot of that's all they can um, do. You know, a lot. Of stuff I would say at least them. she kept it. At least she kept the clothing. It was still PG, right? I, I would say at least from that perspective. I just don't think the lyrics of what she was rapping about in that environment was what should have been done in that environment. I mean, you had a presidential rally. I think there could. How come they ain't, don't? Aren't there songs about women empowerment? Doesn't Beyonce got a song about women empowerment? Yeah. Or and at least somebody. I don't know. I just know that. I just know that. Like, here's here's my 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 um advice or my views to up and coming artists. Just kind of know what you're talking about. Know what you're talking about. Have some conviction about your beliefs mm-hmm. and do some research if you're gonna speak up. You know, and then like you said, be don't don't alienate your whole fan base. I saw a clip of Waka Flock at a concert a few months ago saying that like if you're not voting for Trump, leave my concert or get out of here, something like that. Damn. Or like, yeah, I'm not rocking with you. It's something to that effect. Just disgusting. Like, don't Damn. don't do that. Don't do that at all. And like, you know, express yourself, you, you know, know what you, know what you're talking about though. Have your have your facts straight. And you know See, that's the stuff I'm talking about right there. Regardless we're, we're, Regardless if you are shaming somebody, I mean that's still a form of shaming because you don't agree with me. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I gotta dismiss you. And and the issue, I was telling my wife earlier today, I, I was like, we live in a very immature world. We have a 
a ton of a, a grown grown people who are very immature. Absolutely. Like you mean to tell me, in the case of Walker Flocker, because I don't agree with you, you're gonna tell me to leave. Yeah. Because I don't agree with you on your public post. Yes, I, I agree. I, I know it's on your Instagram page or your Facebook page. It, it's you now putting it out in, into the public. But because I don't agree with you, I'm going to block. You go, you go, if you don't agree with what I got to say, and who I, I'm blocking you. Like, that's childish. That's, you know, yeah. that's cr- I've made several calls for civility in these that's, next few months. I'm going to say be, it. That's crazy. Let's be civil. <laughs> <laughs> let's be civil. And, you know, let's discuss the ideas. I, you know, Obviously, I can talk, right? I can, I can talk and debate, but I'm never gonna be disrespectful to nobody, man. Right. Because guess what? I don't get all the answers. I could be wrong, you know. And, and I'm not especially, with, especially with this stuff, man. This stuff is shaky. I'm not sway. I don't got all the answers. Yeah, I'm telling you, I don't have. This don't stuff have. is shaky, man. So let's be respectful. But I think you know, just know what you're talking about. And as you said, Brian, count the cost. Count the cost. C- count the cost with with uh, how you present yourself, who you support, and if you really believe in it. Go ahead and rock with it, man. And yeah. if if people and if you do it in the right way, again, it's all about doing the things in the right way. If you present it right in the right way. way, if people really rock with you, they're gonna still rock with you, even right. if they disagree with you. Yeah. If they really rock with you. Show you know yourself, saying? show yourself approved. Show that you are diligent and that you know what you're talking about. So if someone does ask you, right, then you have the ability to defend your your belief. Right, like Christians, we do. We supposed to defend our, our beliefs and our faith when people ask us. Mm-hmm. That's, it, that's the same. It's not just in Christianity. It's the same thing in anything. If somebody asks you, "Why do you believe in that?" You should be able to make a firm, objective response to that person as to why you support Trump, why you support Kamala, why you want to do this particular action, why you believe in this particular thing. If you believe the Earth is flat, why? Like yeah. talk about why you got to have evidence. You got to at least have a position and be educated on. It. And I think that's the thing with a lot of rappers and singers and regardless of who they are, they aren't experts in those. Now, the only person I was watching a, a, a clip earlier today with Jizza talking to, um, I met uh, Jizza last year, man. Oh, the, I, the, man. I met Jizza, man, the at the Jizza. airport, at the airport, the rental car place, man. The Jizza. Now, I mean, he's he's a super educated brother. Like he's taught classes at MIT. Like he absolutely is, a, is an authority on his field and his subject matter, which is like quantum physics or something like that, yeah, right? He's yeah. he knows that. Yeah, he can talk about that, right? Yeah. He was talking to um. I always should get to my guy's name. Yeah, it's it's a super long name, Neil. My, oh, uh, Neil's Degrassi. Tyson De- Degrassi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was talking to him. And, and they were having a very intellectual conversation. Why could they both know it? He knows he's an authority. He knows he's an authority. That's how you have great conversations yeah. by people who know what they're talking about. Absolutely. That's 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 the bottom. At least for me, that's the thing. Yeah. So you know, know, so. know what you're talking about, man. At, at least be sincere. Be sincere. And, and, yeah, and, yeah, and be sure. sincere in your ignorance. So you know what? This is I don't know about this, but I do know about this issue right here. <laughs> and this issue I'm gonna support, but at least it's kind of but I think as long as you've been sincere and you got a good heart and you're not trying to alienate nobody, right? Your true fans will rock with you. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Fan. Yeah, right. You just gotta do it right. Okay, let's let's talk about the other thing, right? Which is um promoting good deeds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. A lot of people don't like when they don't like that. Other people Cause it ain't messy. Yeah. That's why they don't they don't like when other people videotape them yeah. doing good deeds. Yeah, I think a trade the truth. Trade the truth. His whole like platform is about recording his good deeds. You know what I'm saying? Uh, why is that an issue? Well, it's two sides to it. I see the I see the issue with it. Uh, mm. Where I land on it, I just think it's a, on a case by case basis. I think you know. Of course, God knows your heart. Mm-hmm. If your heart is, is in the right place. And I do think it's nothing wrong with like so much negativity is promoted in the culture. What's wrong with promoting something positive? But exactly. But you know, and I try not to, you know, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I try not to lead with that because the Lord knows I, I sin all the time. So I'm not trying to act like I'm hey, better than nobody anybody. perfect. But so I'm not trying to leave, but at the same time, though, from a, a spiritual perspective. Even the Bible talks about like doing your good deeds in secret and letting God reward you openly. Right. And about how like people do stuff for people to, to be seen. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not with that at all. And some of the stuff is performative. So I kind of see both sides. So, so it's kind of like 
I think it's a, I think it's about a case by case because I, I do think it's important because rappers are showmen. They mm-hmm. promote stuff. They promote all kind of stuff. So why not promote something good? Because the kids are gonna why follow not? what they see. They're gonna follow you. So if they're gonna follow something, give them something good to follow. That's right. Have them go out, give them good good deeds in their community. Buy the kid lunch at school, or you know. So if you're promoting good deeds, so I get both sides of I it. I get I get it, right? I mean, but you do have pharisaical type of activities, right? You know, being a Pharisee because Pharisee will, you know, they like to you know walk around. You know, and pray in public, and yeah, you pay, know, they, they put dirt on their face. You know, like, yeah, yeah, they, they make them over, themselves over spiritual, so people can see. Look at them; they really holy. Oh my gosh, right? Yeah, some I some, get it. Some rappers do that, and it's kind of like, all right, bro, like, I, <laughs> like you gonna put your whole plat, and it's just like, bro, like I, I get it. I, I see why people have that, you know, that perspective, that duality of perspective to go. Are they doing for clout chasing? Not every good deed that somebody films is for cloud chasing. But I'd rather you instead of holding a, a rack up to your ear like this and sitting, there, I'd rather you, I'd rather see you giving it to somebody in in need as opposed to sitting there flexing on us. Why don't you flex on us by helping somebody? Right. Pay somebody's tuition. So. And there are many, there are many rappers and actors and artists who do that. Right. They may not film it, but they absolutely do that. They're doing the good deeds. They're doing the good work. It's just that nobody really sees it. And then when we do see it, and I think that's the issue is because we haven't made it a practice of exploiting those good deeds, right? And we only see people who do it for clout. And it's like, are they really doing it for clout, though? Are they really doing it for for good deeds? Because, shoot, you can go on YouTube right now and see uh, a, a thousand crazy other stuff. So why shouldn't we see good deeds? Why shouldn't we see... A, you know, an artist helping out a rapper or I mean, a rapper helping out homeless people or, you know, feeding them or doing something that is positive. We don't we don't really see that. And as soon as we see it, we go, I oh, mean, they clout chasing, man. They want people yeah. to see that they doing good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't, they don't have a history of doing this continuously. They just doing it just one time because the album about to drop. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I think that's the. I think that's the thing, right? And you gave examples in here. Yeah, because recently, um, I saw um Sauce Walker. That's the one mm-hmm. really woke me up to it. He gave, a, he said this homeless guy came to, to his car and asked him for uh some shoes. Oh, he didn't even want no money from me, so he gave him. I think he gave him some money too, but he gave him some, some new shoes and all this stuff. And here's the thing, though: these days, you never know what's real and what's fake. That's true. You know, and I know Sauce Walker. He has a history of doing some stunts. But my, my, but my point is, who cares? Like, that's between him and his creator. Yeah, it ain't up to us to determine whether that person's scamming or whatever the case is, right? I mean, there's been many times... I'm going to cut you off, my bad. There's you, been many you, times you, I've given money to people that have asked me for, hey, hey, I just need a couple of dollars to get some gas. I'm like, I don't know what a couple of dollars is going to do, but okay, here you go. Or let's fill it up or do something, right? And it's like, they're good deeds. So why shouldn't we just do... Yeah. But the issue is, should you record it? That's and, the issue. And, and press upload. That's the issue. And, and write your whole little self-serving caption to that's go with issue. it, right? <laughs> that's the issue people have. But people do it for negative stuff. And that's the thing. It's like, exactly. It's the same amount of energy, the same amount of, of, of time to load up the negative video and load up and put write the negative caption and you know, do whatever. It's the, same, it's the same amount of energy and time. I remember the game... Um, well, at one time, for many years, was my favorite rapper for many, many years. I just he just stopped being my favorite rapper like two years ago. For the game, yeah. He stopped. Why? Why he stopped? I see now. I got it. Like why he stopped? It's the, I just got cause it, it's hard. I still love the game. He's, he's one of my favorites, but he's not my favorite anymore because it's hard being a game fan because he's such a, a dope, dope rapper. But he does so many stunts, so so, so much, <laughs> so much like just questionable stuff mm. for clout. It's hard to I've been and I, it's hard defending the game. It's hard. It's, it's real hard. To, and I just got tired of the defense. Like tired of when, when he when he did <laughs> Stray and Eminem uh last year, oh, yeah. that was like enough for me. Like, all right, you're going too far. Like, like, you're going too like, far. Then they, they, you know, which by the way, his reasoning for being mad, I actually agree with, which mm. is which is very I'm in a minority. I thought he should have been on stage at the Super Bowl with the rest of them. Not performing those songs, but he should have been up there. And I thought it would have been dope because Game was game was in the video in the club. You know that? Yeah. Game was dancing in the video yeah. in the club. He could have been up there because you know they had a long feud with him and fifty. Yeah. They finally passed it up. Yeah. Him and fifty passed it up. He could just be there with 
dancing with the girl because he 50 Cent had girls. He, he recreated the video. Gang could have been up there. It would have been a good symbolism for unity, mm-hmm. you know, on the West Coast. Game was a pillar under Dre. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you being mad. You didn't get the call. But the way he, he acted out, you don't diss Dre. <laughs> you don't diss Dre. You don't do that, man. Man, you don't with Dre. But you if, put the wrong guy so in your own That was my, my, my point. The whole point of that is that he had a thing called the Robin Hood Project years ago. I remember. Well, he was giving away, you know, giving away like just everything. And people were really attacking him, mm. calling it performative and why you recording it. Mm. He had a whole separate Instagram page called, I don't know if it's still up, called Robin Hood Project. Project where he would just go off and it had a whole team of people giving away stuff. When the Flint water crisis came, I think he gave like almost a million dollars. It was a real big deal. Mm-hmm. And he just kept getting attacked because of course he's known to do stunts for, for clout. See? So they were, but I'm just, but my whole thing was, well, that's good though. That's because, good. Especially in Flint, I'm from Michigan. Like they could use those hundreds of thousands of dollars of water, whatever, you, you know, that's, mm-hmm. we should all be trying to give water, go up there and, and help out. So. You know, it's a balance, and only God really knows your heart in terms of like your clout. You know, mm-hmm. but I just think rappers, you're in, you're in like almost everything you do is a marketing opportunity. Unfortunately, but everything. You, but my thing though is, if you're about that life, why not document it? Let's say you do help the homeless. Yeah, you want to be secretive about it, but I mean, you want your fans to know this is what you you about. All right, this is what. You- so you got to let them know, and, and you might inspire some of them. That's true. So, now, so, 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 so we talked about in the beginning behaviors, right? Yeah. If that's in you and that's a, a behavioral trait that you have to support and to help, you're going to do that. Now, I think the reason why people film it is so that there's evidence that people can see that there are good deeds that happen in the world. Cause we see so many negative things that happen all the time. It's time to see some good stuff. You heard of uh, Jimmy darts. No, I haven't. He's a, it's, it's, Jimmy Darts and I think Bond Gives. Those are two Instagram pages that I follow. Mm. And all they do is record themselves doing good deeds. All they do, and it's to the point now I'm wondering, is some of this stuff fake? Because they, they have so <laughs> it's so heartwarming. And mm. they always ask the person, hey, can I borrow it? They, 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 the thing is they go up to them and they ask them for, for some help with something. Mm. And whoever helps them, they give them $10,000 or whatever it is, mm-hmm. or, or $1,000 or whatever. Oh, I think I've seen some of these people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love it. It's heartwarming, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But then it's like, okay, is this performative my whole point of saying that is as an upcoming artist like if it's in you do it just be prepared for the backlash oh yeah because people are gonna say you cloud chasing yeah they're gonna say you're doing it for but performance. It, but if it's really in you stick to your guns if it's really who you are because again that's can't help your brand if that's who you are mm-hmm. you know and you should mm-hmm. for lack of a better word ex- exploit it i hate to say it like that but i mean but it shouldn't be the other way around. Though. Don't don't like, hey, what can I exploit? Okay, do a good deed. No, right, if, yeah, if, that's the- if you're doing good deed. In other words, every positive characteristic about you, you should exploit. True. I mean, the, if I'm going to videotape it, videotape it, it's like I'm way back in the old school, right? Record it. Record it on your phone, right? You can tell them a, a different generation could be videotape stuff. Still. For sure. But if you're going to record it, I mean, your, your, your intention has to be pure, of course, to say, I want to document just the good deeds that we do as, as, as human beings, right? I'm going to make a, a I'm going to document these types of activities so that other people know that people have warm, genuine hearts for other people. Humanity. Yeah, okay, great. I record it. I don't mean I'm cloud chasing. Now, my, if I got an album that drops and it comes out next week and, and I'm, I'm trying to show you my good deeds because the album is about to drop, then that's something that's different. We seen people do that. Even, or, or they'll get into his beef or whatever the case. But. Even the term clout chasing, man, my homeboy got mad at me one time because I said, like, sometimes clout chasing is okay. Like, think about the word. You're ch- you want, you're chasing clout. You're chasing clout. If you're trying to promote something, you want to get eyes on it. So you want to get clout for it. So, like, that's why you're posting it. The good deal. It is chasing clout is at chasing some clout. point. So it's like, it's, you know, some people don't, <laughs> don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. Like, that's right. If you want to, you know, why do you post. <laughs> This kind of is funny to me. Whenever somebody passes away or uh, somebody's birthday mm-hmm. and you got a picture with them in your phone somewhere, why do you make it about you and post a picture of you and that person? <laughs> you know, when it's really about them. <laughs> but you want you want everybody to know that you knew them. That you knew them. You got a picture with them. That's right. 
Or you post up like the last text message that you had. Oh, or, that's a big one. Or the oh, la- that's you know, a big one. I that's, just talked to him the other day. Here's what we talked that's about. That's a big one. Yeah. Hey, bro. And it's always the, hey, man, I supported your music. I think you did a great job, man. I'm looking forward to, you know, working with you in the future. Yeah, rest in peace. I, I don't want to say, because I got some home, because I... I got some homies. I, that, <laughs> I just saw, I just saw what somebody passed just I, recently. I, so I, some of them my homies. Why well, I don't want to say nothing. Some, <laughs> some of them people are my homeboys, and I don't want them to get. Because I said my, some of my homies get mad at me when I said before about car chase. So I don't. Yeah, that's like, like I gotta choose my words carefully. I'm being diplomatic here, but they're not my home. I don't know who they are. So but, they, I may know. I, I may got know, some but. homies that 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 recent and and I, I didn't want to. I want to rest in pieces, person. But if I do it, it's gonna gonna yeah, tell them myself. But it's gonna be me and them. But. Somebody passed. Rest in peace to all our fallen soldiers, man, in hip hop. Yeah. But like, just read my timeline, man. People screenshotting stuff and all this stuff, man. Yeah. It's just like I get the <laughs> sentiment; it's pure. But it's like you're taking this opportunity to make something about you. Mm. This person knew you, and he liked your music. And don't, don't get me wrong; it's a. Can I'm I, not. I, I'm not even saying this wrong, Brian. I'm just hold saying on, on. My, my point is that just call it what it is, though. Just just be honest about it. It's chasing clout, and it's okay to chase clout sometimes. So if you want to post a picture with you and the person that passed away, okay, but just understand you're making it about you, and it's cool. You're making it about you. You're not but, making it about no, the fact no, that they passed listen, away. My thing is just, my thing is self awareness. You're up and coming artist. This person is a, is a, is considered a legend. He knew you. You're taking the opportunity to let the world know that this person who's a legend was in your orbit. So knew you, but you. they were in your DM saying, hey, yeah, I appreciated th- th- you. They knew you. Like your album. It's cool. You're clout chasing, but it's cool. You're but just call chasing. it what it is. So just be be real about it, ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell you something that disturbed me? Go ahead. It it, it really grinded my gears. <laughs> Go ahead. What's that? When they use a, a, a post from Chadwick Boseman. Before he died. Talk about Kamala? Yes. That pissed me off. I don't know why though. Why? Why? Because he's dead. He's I mean he, he, he's, he's dead, but 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 it is a physical fact that his last post was endorsing Kamala being the vice president. It, but he's not for president. Okay, but anyway. But I, I get it. That was his last post. Yes, he supported her. But to re-bring that back up in defense to say Chadwick Bozeman, Black Panther supports Kamala. Again, I as get long it. as we call it what it is, I'm like, yo, hold up. As long as we call it what it is, Black Panther they, supports Kamala. They exploiting, but it, it, was, it was an exploitation. Oh my gosh, that pissed me off. I was like, but again, like I said, how I don't, are you? Hey, Brian, I don't know, man. But what again, I think that when you're up and coming, when you're trying to market yourself, you got to use all the weapons in your toolbox. That, sometimes. But but is that is that culture vulturism activities? No, because it, it, was it a genuine post on Chadwick's behalf? Was it a real post Chadwick did? It was. It was. Fair game. Now, the people who used it to reinforce the message, maybe not so much. But again, it's how you do it, right? Maybe not so much. I, again, it's how you do it, right? How, if you're honest about it, hey, uh, Chadwick Boseman's last post was supporting Kamala's uh, vice president nomination. As opposed to Chadwick Boseman always knew Kamala would be, would be the next president. And he even I, said it on this day. He told her, he whispered it. He whispered it. She looked, she looked real close. He, if you look real close, you can see him whispering in her, her ear saying you're going to be the president. You know what I'm saying? I like, get it. As long as you're I get it. honest about how you're, and you're not like using clickbait and lying. Nah, they were looking, they were using like. But Beto, listen, it was a real post. It was a real post. So I get it's it. fair game. I get it. Real post. Listen, I get it. I'm a regular citizen. When it comes to politics, I'm a regular citizen. I could say, let's say I want to support Kamala, right? I could say, hey, y'all, I support Kamala. And so did Chadwick Boseman. Look at this picture right here. I could do that. Of course. As a supporter. So of course. Anybody could do it. Anybody could do that. You know why? Because it's a it's a public post that Chadwick made. It. It, it is. So what's the problem but, though? But to why, you, but to you use, but to you but to use that. Why not use it? Why wouldn't you use it? You know why? Why not? Because he has no re- he has no no say so. When when was that post made? In 2019. 2019. 2020? We, we, in 2024. His mind could have changed. And we don't know that. It could have, but it didn't know. But we don't know. We not we dealing in facts. We don't know. We're, de- we're not dealing in unknowns. What's, no, no, no. What's known is before he died. What's, what's his known last before post he died? Was supporting Kamala for I, vice I president. Bro. I for vice man. president. We don't know his position today. <laughs> we don't. Just like he don't you, have one. God bless the dead. He don't, he, he don't have one. He's not he here with us. He don't. So we can only go by what was. But what to he had use before. that and then to say that's fair game. 
He's and then to say, see, he supports her even. No, it, no, 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 not supports. We don't know. He supported her against no, how you said. Yeah, but that's not what they came out and said though. Well, it, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't a come out and say, look, he was a supporter of Kamala. That's it, the proper way. It was like, no, look, he supports Kamala. Well, the last thing I saw, but I, I don't know. Maybe we might have saw something different. What I saw was it was saying in Chadwick's last post, he supported Kamala's vice presidential nomination. Oh yeah, I got to go back and pull up the post that I That's saw. That's what I saw, and, and yeah, I thought oh, yeah. there was nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, and then and then from there you can go on and talk about in your voice about how good Kamala is. True, in your voice, that, and just that's true. So that's fair game. But I just again, don't like using posts for that because the, I'm, uh, only for myself is because that person is no longer here to provide any more context to that post because things have changed. Things change over time. Mm -hmm. Twenty nineteen, he may have supported her. 2024, he may not. We don't, but we, we don't we know. We'll never know that though. But, so I think it's unfair to say you can't use it. It's off limits because he's not alive now. No, no, no. We can only go off what was there. You can only go off what was there at that moment in that time. And if I'm on her in campaign time, marketing team, I'm like, run it. Oh, you but, know you're going to do that. But, but, but for you me, you know you're going to run it. For me, Brian, that's, Andre, that's, that's I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure it's done properly. That's culture vote. Uh, I think you just, I think that's clickbaity. If I'm the cat, that's uh, clickbaity. No. Why? Because you know, oh, Chad Bolt. Clickbaity is when you lie. It's when you, it's when you, it's when you knowingly deceive. And if you, if you, if you're saying this was his position in 2019 when he was alive, that's not clear. But if you're trying to insinuate that his the spirit, he supports her no. now, or he yeah, told that, her back so, then, that's so a that's lie. kind of that's the that's the the message that's being perpetrated is that he supported her in 2019 he supports her now. That's not what I got when I saw it. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah. I didn't get that when I saw. Oh it. yeah, I saw a bunch of stuff. No, so I said, but that's, as, that's as soon not, as I saw it, I was like, that's not the sentiment oh, I got. Minute. The sentiment I got was that before he died, his last thing was to support this woman. So he rocked, true. He, so he rocked but, with her. We don't know what he would feel today. We don't know. And that's that's what I'm. That's that's Listen, the. If Biggie Smalls hadn't died, would he have been like a one hit, two album wonder, and washed up later? <laughs> would he would he still be a legend today? We don't know. We don't. We don't. So know. all we can say is that he's a legend because he died. We don't know. With, with two amazing albums. We don't know. We don't know if he would have. It's plenty of rappers that had two amazing albums that kind of fell off and and is not considered on a goat. Right. We, right? we don't. We don't know. And so so uh, all the it just and and, and that's the part right. It says, Chadwick Boseman's last tweet before he died was in support of Kamala Harris. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing's wrong with it. Ain't no, wrong with that. But nothing else. In support of her for, and, and like I said, that, that's just for me. No, I'm not hating on Kamala. No, but no, I'm not. You I know, don't think, I, I, and I'm Brian, not people, people I don't like, think nothing wrong with that, Kamala though. because she on Chadwick. No, I nope, don't, say, I don't not, think nothing wrong with that, though. What I'm saying is the fact that you, you went back into 2019 to, and you why can would, do that. You can why do that. Wouldn't you? you can you can use why whatever types of you? because editorial because commentary Brian, that you can use. They did not bend the truth. They didn't bend the truth. It was all factual and it's all True. public information. But we so know it's fair game. But it's the intent. The intent is to let people know. You should no, know. it's not the intent. I don't think that was the intent. I don't think that was the intent to go back into 2019 to pull that because it's the influence that Chadwick has. It's it's the identity that he has from a, a a portrayal of a strong black leader as T'Challa and as the Black Panther, that they use that. Because, I mean, think about it. You got, when Black Panther came out, you got people who really, really looked up to Ch Chadwick Boseman like, bro, you the king. You're the king of, of black culture, of black people, of Wakanda. And so now we're going to go back to secure the black vote to say... See, he even supported Kamala. Brian, we don't we don't know what he would do today. We don't know. That, that's but, the thing. We but, we don't know. But here's the thing. Let me just throw some facts out at you, okay? Let's get it. The vice president, the president's only only served for two years for two terms, right? Yep, two terms. And usually, when the president, um, you know, serves their whole eight years. You, not all the time, but a lot of times, one of the prime candidates to run for the president again is the vice president. Not all the time. Not all the time. But a lot of times. A lot of times, one of the prime candidates of course. to run is the vice president, yep. right? Do you think it's out of the realm of possibility that Chadwick Boseman knew to just potentially be a president someday? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw my support out at her? We don't know. We don't know. Right. We don't know. We don't but, know. But to, but but, to insinuate... But, but it, no, no. But is it possible, though? Is it possible that's the thought? 
It's always possible because the majority, okay. and, and because the majority, right? Of so you don't VPs, know. So you don't know that he didn't want us endorsing for president one day. And we don't know that he did. And, and, so, so now and, we dealing no, no, with a whole no, bunch of no, we, we, no, what else? I'm, I'm just saying facts. It's a fact that 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 vice presidents are often presidential candidates. Eventually, yes, if the president serves both terms, right? True. And God bless the dead. You know, Chadwick fought for many years with, with his colon cancer, right? Man. And, sure. you know, we don't know if he knew he was going to pass or not, or if he right. was fighting it, but I'm sure he probably knew that, he, that it was a possibility he would pass. It, it was possible that he might not make it. True. So, it, hey, it's a possibility he knew that this might be one of his last tweet, his last posts. It's a possibility he knew this might be one of my very last posts I ever make in my life. Mm, so, maybe you don't, well, my whole point is you don't know that he wouldn't have supported her, is all I'm saying. True, we don't know. And, and, we we and, don't know. And from what you read to me, it didn't say for a fact that he was that that. Oh, he supports her today. It, is, it just says that his last tweet, his, his last post was that is that he supports Kamala. And that's fair to me. That's that's it. That's it just totally says, fair. Yeah, to to that's me, totally fair. To me, in my opinion. to me, that goes back to what you were saying in the beginning. Something being clickbaity, and something and using something to entice people to. Have a certain viewpoint or perspective. But clickbait is when you lie, Brian. That's not, not necessarily. That's not necessarily a lie. Not it's necessarily. No, 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 no. Clickbait. That's not the definition definition of clickbait, though. Clickbait is not about lying. Well, it's the spirit of lying. It's, it's, it's when you try to frame. It's deception. That's what the word. It's deception. <laughs> Clickbaiting is deception. When you dece- when you true when you deceive it, it, people. And to me, there's nothing deceptive about that. True. It's a true. It's so, a true statement. It refers to the practice of writing sensationalized or misleading headlines misleading. in order to attract clicks uh, on a piece of content, right? Misleading. It's so, not. So, so, so my my. So here's my question. Okay. My question is, what did the tweet say? That that's the that's the, and I know this ain't even part of the, what we were talking about. No, I right? think it's, I think it's important because we're talking to, we're, we're we're talking about exp- when you <laughs> up becoming an artist how to how to move out here. Right. Are you being a culture vulture? This is, these are important conversations because you as a, as an artist, producer, whatever you are in the in the industry, you got to know how you move and, and at least take a position. Maybe you agree with Brian or that Brian or this Brian or whatever you whoever you agree with, <laughs> at least have a stand. Have and, a stand and, and know how you're moving out here. Right. So the the chat the that the, the chat the text says yes at Kamala Harris uh, when we all in hashtag when we all vote. Hashtag vote twenty twenty. That's what that's the post right there. That and it's so in its entirety. So you're saying that he didn't want you to vote for Kamala. He just happened to put a picture of her. Up? No, no. He said yes at Kamala in one of his in in, in one of his, August eleventh, twenty twenty. In one of his tweets that he knew could possibly be one of his last posts. Twenty twenty. Like I said, just for me. So you so you just think it's, it's just just for me, right? It's so. This man is fighting stage four colon I cancer. Get it. I get said This could very well Black be, be Panther what? star Chadwick Boseman's final tweet was the support of Kamala Harris and fans are emotional. Right? Black, know, we, we, we know, we know. To me, see, see, this is the reason why it's hard to define culture and culture because we, It is. Because you got differing opinions. And, right. And I think there's validity to what both, what both of us are saying. So it's hard True. to d- define culture vulture stuff because there's some gray here. There's, there's some, some gray. gray. So, because I don't think, I it's, think it's, I think it's totally in bounds. No, I, I think it's fine that they use. You can use any form of public media in order to support your. And they didn't lie. They didn't, they didn't mislead. And to support your. They didn't. It's just the intent of how they used it. Because they was Chadwick the only person that made a tweet about Kamala in support of Kamala, whether dead or alive. But why Chadwick? Why Black Panther Chadwick? Why Black Why Black Panther Star Chadwick? Why not get on up, Excuse me. Chadwick? Why not? Um, what's the What's the other movie Chadwick played in? Um, what Four Bridges, Two Bridges, or whatever? Um, yeah, I, yeah, some um, some with the bridges. Or oh, no, as a baseball player. Oh, forty two. Yeah, forty two. Why not forty two? Chadwick. Why Black Panther Chadwick? See, this this is what I'm talking. See. See, for me, it's all about the intent behind and the messaging. Why do they use Black Panther? Okay, right. Chadwick. If if you were consulting her team, what would you do with that information? 
True. I would put Black Panther Chadwick because of what people associate Chadwick and Black Panther as strong black so you leader. Would, so, but then, would you would you put a post up like that? Up? Would you? What would you do? Would you use it or not? If if I was her team, heck yeah, yeah. heck yeah, we so, use it. So you know why we? You, you know why we use it? Why are you letting it grind your gears? You know then? why I would use it because yeah. I'm in that position to help Kamala become the president of the United States. So I absolutely would use a post like that and position the verbiage that way. Come on, we. Marketing. You, 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 but why are you letting it grind your gears, though? Oh, not... <laughs> why are you letting it upset you if you would do it yourself? If I was in that position, I, I would. And I understand... The, and, and the reason why is because I understand the intent. But I don't think the intent is... Because my thing is... It's, it's I a, understand the intent. It's, what's deceiving is when Trump will play... Or any politician will play a music artist at their rally as if that artist backs them. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying whether that's the case or not. You know I what mean, I'm saying? Like, that's like... You I mean, know, does 50 Cent back Trump, though? He may. What's interesting, what's, what's, <laughs> he, what's, what's he very may. interesting is that uh, I think Trump used one of Dr. Dre's songs and that one of Eminem's songs. There's it, it, been a lot of artists used their songs, mm -hmm. and the artist came out and said, season this is right away. Yeah, that's... 50 Cent hasn't. And 50 Cent hasn't. 50, and, 50, I think he's reposted it. Well, I don't know about that. Well, maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> it, there were reports that he was supposed to perform at, at the Republican convention. And... 50 Cent never did not deny that either. Mm. So it's interesting. It's interesting. These next four months going to be... Did, did it Floyd is it May four months? Did, didn't Floyd Mayweather and, and 50 go to the inauguration for Trump? I believe they did together. Maybe. I think they did. Maybe. Don't quote me on that, but I think so. My, my thing is always intent behind marketing. Your marketing major is the intent behind marketing. Why do they use those words? And, and no matter what it is, right? If I'm promoting burgers... Why did I use those words? Because I know those words connect with people. There's an emotional connection. When Chadwick died, my son came running downstairs. Well, he didn't run down the stairs. He, he came downstairs and said, I guess there's not going to be a, a Black Panther, a next, another Black Panther movie. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, Chadwick Boseman just died. It literally felt like my heart just dropped. Yeah. Now, I don't even know Chadwick. But yeah. it was the emotional connection Absolutely. that we as Black people have seen the Black Panther. And all the Avengers movie and the history of Black Panther. We like, oh my gosh. So when we see that and we know Black Panther actor Chadwick Boseman supports Kamala, we're like, oh, because we understand what that what that is. It's and, it's the intent. But Chadwick, again, uh, according to reports, uh, I think uh, Ryan Coogler confirmed this, but Chadwick was reading the script there. They were going over ideas for Black Panther too. So he was fully in Black Panther form when he endorsed Kamala. So again, like I'm just saying, where's it, the there's, lie? There's you know the emotion. <laughs> where's, it's, it's, it's no, the, where's the misleading? No, no, no. It's not the lie. It's not the lie. It's the intent. It is, it is the. It's just okay. So why do they have Meg Thee Stallion perform at Kamala's thing? We know why. To secure the black vote. Meg Thee Stallion has a certain level of exposure to the black community. Yeah, but Chadwick wasn't doing anything exploitive in that tweet. When yeah, he, but he, tweeted that. he wasn't. He wasn't. But I don't he, think he wasn't embarrassing the black community. <laughs> in, in that so, tweet. so, so the intent has to, so that the intent has to be the embarrassing. I don't think that was Meg the Stallion's intent. It was her intent was just to come and perform. No, no, no. Well, you're talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, results. I'm talking about effect. Is an embarrassment. You know, there was no. Not a lot of people felt embarrassed by Meg the Stallion. Oh, yes, they did. Not was, a lot of people. A lot of people did. I mean, Des Not Bryant. Des Bryant. There's a lot of people tweeting back and forth. Yeah. About that. But not a lot of people, a lot of people like, go girl, you do your thing. You go out there and represent woman in power. Like I read a lot of the tweets yeah. that in a lot of the YouTube comments as but, while I was preparing for this to read what they, and people are. But on, they, there were some important voices that, that here's the thing though, because a, mm. a lot of folks still support Kamala, you know what I'm saying? And I like Kamala, you know what I'm saying? But so, but I was appalled by that though. I was really appalled by, by that, you know what I'm saying? So there is a lot of voices out there. Yeah. That, uh, Whether those voices were gatekeepers of the culture or, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who supported what Meg Thee Stallion did at that rally. A lot of people. I mean, I'm literally reading comments like, wow, yeah. a lot of people did and a lot of people didn't. But I, I think, again, I'm always trying to bring it back to the end user, the person that's, 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 that's right. listening and watching this. Just, you got to take a stand you know, and you got to, at least within your own moral compass, know where the line is for being a culture vulture right. <laughs> and being <laughs> exploitive, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, mm -hmm. you know, when you're moving out here because 
this is a good example, you know. Mm -hmm. And let's say, like, I've had this happen a lot when you're on the team, on an artist team, for mm -hmm. example, or or some kind of entertainer's team, and you got debates, you know, oh, yeah, for sure. within the team. You got to be able to flush through this stuff. And my my viewpoint has always been, if we're on the team, you know, the door closed over there, right? We can, like, argue and, and really hash it out, but once we decide on something... We have That's to right. all move as if it was our idea in the first. Whatever right. idea we go with, we all in line with it as if it was our. Because a lot of times, what happens is you have a team and, and you don't know which direction to go mm -hmm. in, and a decision is made by wh whatever the leader is, or whether it's a democracy, you mm -hmm. vote whatever. A decision is made, but the folks who are against it, they don't get their full effort because it wasn't oh, yeah. or or dare I say, try to sabotage oh, it for sure because they don't want the other person to look good because it was their idea. This happens a lot, y'all. Yeah, yo, that we yo, that's a we're gonna talk about that next time. That's a that's a topic for next time. Happens a whole lot. It happens and, a whole lot. And again, but again, when when you're navigating how to move when you're making these decisions, mm -hmm. be aware of that too. You know, your team. Because you need a team, y'all, as as much as possible. <laughs> for sure. Try to get a team. But sometimes the team may be just you in the beginning. You and your best friend or whatever, sure. or your spouse or whatever. But you gotta know how to move out here though. You At least to. take a position. So I I think that's my whole the whole if I was wrapping this up. My whole thing would be your intent. What is your intent, your purpose, what drives you, what motivates you, right? We were talking about grind and hustle and execution and things like that in the beginning. You know, what's, how are you going to move? Which, what, what are your behaviors that you're going to adopt? And then how do those behaviors represent you, represent your overall brand? Yeah. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to do marketing, how are you going to do it? Are you going to do clickbaity type, misleading, misinformation type of things so that you can get eyes on you very quickly? Or are you going to move in a completely different way? Are you going to move more you know, on, on the, the, the positive side, the more, you know, not messy side? Um, and I think that's for any artist that wants to get into this, to this whole thing. Like, you got to know what you stand for. You got to know how you want to move. You got to know what your overall purpose is. You got to know, you know, who's for you, who's going to ride with you. Have mm -hmm. people around you too that will help you because, like I said before, when you make up your mind you want to do something, folks will justify. They'll find a way to make it make sense some kind of way. But you got to have those folks around you that are challenged that without you dismissing them from the team. Right. You know. That's that's, that's facts though. So sure. That's crazy, man. But man, it's been a dope conversation, yeah. brother. Yeah. yeah like, I, like I kind of feel like do we even like come up with a solution <laughs> <laughs> or a definitive? But I think we. I think we brought a lot of good discussion points right, right. for people to think about right. as they navigate in this music industry as well, shoot. independent artists. Shoot. I mean, for those of y'all who be in the comments, you know, right? Give, you know, tell us what the solution may be. Kind of help us figure out, you know. Or what your views are. What yeah. your views are, your opinions, your perspectives, right? I mean, I could be completely wrong about a lot of stuff and I'm okay with that. I don't know everything. I'm a, lot sure. is a, a lot of this is an opinion based. It's an opinion, a lot right? It's an opinion. So, but just don't try to kill us or hate us because our opinion. Right. We, Share your thoughts. We, we ain't gonna kill you for your opinion. Right. We're gonna all get. We're gonna be respectful. We're respectful. We are trying to win. We want y'all to win. We want to win. That's right. That's all it is. So, but man, B, like, <laughs> any unplug, man. Like, like you know, this is what we're about. Is that so, right? Man, appreciate uh, you know y'all being here. So, um, until next time, we get together and, and uh, hash it up. Peace. Peace.